The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Tuesday, August 24th, 2021, years after zero. We're on Sirius and YouTube, and this is a big day to have a big show. Yes! Can't thank enough for watching and listening wherever the hell you may be. I hope you had an incredible morning. Let's have a fantastic afternoon, shall we? Jason Wright, president of the Washington football team, for now. No, I'm not saying he won't be the president for much longer. He will be for, it seems like, probably forever at this point with how much he has just hit dinger after dinger after dinger after that franchise was at the bottom of the bottom, PR-wise, public-wise, everything. Now they're still a team with no name, or do they? Will they remain the Washington football team, or will they pick a new name? There's allegedly uh, final three. They could be a part of these eight that was released. Mm. We'll ask him about his life as president he's a former player now running a team on the business side as a former player incredibly proud of this dude kicking ass every time we chat it's a good convo and uh, i'm not saying we're going to get the answer what the team name is going to be but i think we'll at least get a little bit more of an idea on how they're making their decision uh and also hey what about covid you know how has this affected your whole life over there in dc too i assume the rules are uh, protocols are a little bit different over there, potentially, you know, sure. as opposed to maybe some other places that have a little bit more loosey goosey rules. Although it sounds like everywhere is potentially locking it back down again. No. We'll talk to him about it. <laughs> also, joining us today, Ice Cube. What? What? <laughs> you shitting me? Nobody expected that. Nobody expected me to just say right there, Ice Cube. No. A lot of people <laughs> thought there was going to be a lot of different names. Nobody on earth was sitting there going, you know what? I bet Ice Cube's coming on Pat McAfee show. Today. <laughs> hey, this weekend, big time playoffs for the big three, dude. Let's yeah. go. Hey, let's go, dude. You Final got, four, baby. You got Trilogy and Tri-State. They're going to battle. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And then the three-headed monster and the triplets, they're going to get after it. Look out. And then the winner of those two games are going to battle in the, for the big three championship in a share of $100,000. Wow. Let's go. In the Bahamas, no less. Come on. Wow. Guy. Not bad. Here we go. We'll also have to talk about, uh, you know, NWA Friday, next Friday, Friday after next, what? all the jump streets, what? the ride alongs, what? and straight out of Compton, what? and everything else this guy has done. A mastermind when it comes to business and art. Cannot wait to hear his thoughts. I'm a massive fan of not only he, but his son who loves WWE. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. His son's a talent as well. Yeah. Hell yeah. Straight out of Compton. Unbelievable yeah. in there. I cannot wait. To chat with Ice Cube. I'm sure he's excited to chat with us, too. Without question. I'm Absolutely. sure he went to bed last night and he said, I'm talking to a bunch of white doofuses out there in the middle <laughs> yeah. of Indiana. Can't wait. <laughs> Should be a good time. Can't wait. We'll watch the big three uh, playoffs this weekend for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Got a bet on it. Uh, talks to tables here at Ty Schmidt at Boston Connor. The mall looks fantastic, Bob. Thank you. I tried to do the, uh, you know, like the poof up on, on the top, but yeah. I just can't figure it out yet. I'm still working on the blow dryer skills, if you will. See, this is something that... You know, I'm a blow dryer guy at this point in my life. Should have been for a lot longer time. A lot mm-hmm. of people have been telling me for a long time, hey, your hair's curly, you got a lot of calyx and yes. all that stuff. You should use the blow dryer power through. I'm like, I ain't got time for the fucking blow dryer. Exactly. Sure. Sally McAfee uses the blow dryer, okay? That is a, the blow dryer of the family is Sally McAfee. And she's mm-hmm. in there and she is an artist with that thing. Double? Well, I, I don't know if she has double. I don't know if we had enough electrical outlets to run both of them. <laughs> but uh, she is an absolute weapon in there with that thing. Uh-huh. And I never bought in, never bought in, never bought in. And then as I've gotten older, now I'm, I will use it. And it is a weapon. Your hair is very similar to mine. I told you, like, hey, you're getting a mullet cut. It looks good. Let's not let the hair kind of ruin it. You know, yeah. get in there. Get that blow dry. I think once you start, you know, finding out what you can do with that canvas, you'll really appreciate it. But we need to stop the narrative that dude shouldn't use blow dryers, by the way. I agree. Yeah. It's quick. Yes. It is very quick. It's only like a minute, minute and a half. Mm-hmm. If you have curly hair and don't want to look like a full stooge, go ahead and do it. You know, I should have been doing it a long time ago. Think of my mugshot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mugshot's much it. different if I have goddamn blow dryer. People probably talking about, wow, look how good that guy's hair is. And 
instead it's like, oh, is that Gary Busey and Carrot Top? <laughs> you know, it's a little bit of bullshit. So I'm just saying, I think you're doing a great job. It looks good. Thank you. I, it's growing fast on the sides, yeah, though. Very fast. That's the thing about this hair is that it goes out and it goes fast. So I got to go back to the barber. Are I you going to think about maybe learning how to fade myself? Yeah, because it's just right there, right? Yeah. Usually I only do it in gambling, but I, I think it might be time to just take that Manscaped <laughs> razor. And just buzz it up Fade a little. yourself. Yes. Yeah, I don't think you should use the Manscaped razor because no. the Manscaped razor is unbelievable. It'll uh-huh. get there. But there is definitely one you can find at Walgreens that just has all little, the different. Oh. Clip on there, yep. oh, a buzzer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Clippers. Yeah. Clippers. 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 Oh, see, I don't know because it's taken me a little bit just to find the groove with the uh, hair dryer blower, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, but you called. said you found your helmet for the rest of your life. Absolutely. And I did. So Thanks to Roman. Let's strap it up then. Let's strap it up. Okay. You want I mean, I think I can figure it out, but I also like going to the barber shop, you know, hanging uh, with the boys. I agree, you I have agree. to go every week to yeah, get it I, cut. I, you know, I, you're gonna be pay- you're gonna be paying quite a bit. Well, I was thinking every other. That was kind of my thought. Was if you want a really nice fade, you got to go every other week to get it cleaned up. But true. If if you know, I can figure it out. Maybe do they do that on YouTube? Do they tell you like, hey, this is how you cut a fade? Just go like this. Yeah, this, yeah. This. yes. Oh yeah. They're, like back whenever World Star was running the world, uh-huh. you know, when Worlds, of course, they had. One of their first ads that I saw was for this, <laughs> for this mirror kit and Ooh. this light kit and this fade yourself whole program thing. And the dude that was the uh, the the Both ad person. or whatever, yeah, he was so good. But I every time I looked at, it, I was like, that ain't something I could do. I <laughs> I, I, I think it's very people do cut their own hair. It is very difficult. Oh I yeah. Think. So me just acting as if you would be able to pick that up like it's nothing, I think was a bit wrong on my end. Yeah. But you might be able to get really good at that, especially because that thing is going to continue to grow. You only have to fade just yeah. just this, this little part area. of your head Small right chunk. here. Yeah, I think I might be able to do it myself, but also like one mix up, one sneeze, one you know. Oh, oh what gosh. are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. I then, get so scared whenever I'm just trimming the uh, the old face. Yes. You know what I mean? Just one little me get bored oh what's going on you know somebody else cutting my hair somebody asked me a question you just go ah and then your beard's done yeah i wouldn't trust myself either no there's no way i can't do it you know especially like with the stash i worry if i'm over here all of a sudden mullets are all the way back huh yeah i think so yeah yeah how long i I don't remember the first one was the 80s 90s was the mullets thought 80s 80s probably 80s was and then it was an entire decade like are we looking at an entire decade here where you're going to be able to run with this thing you think i'm hoping that i can carry this into like 2040 i'm looking like for the entire mac jones reign i think i'm just going to continue to just wear the mullet unless we start Start losing, and then maybe I mix it up, but I don't think that's going to happen. No way. Didn't expect to get into this conversation right here to start off the show, but I appreciate your hair, and I think you look incredible. At Ty Schmidt, how you doing, pal? I'm doing great. Okay, so he just said something there. The Mac Jones hair, 20 years, he's thinking. Okay? Yeah, probably. Now, it is being said in Cam Newton's first day in purgatory, away from... Something just happened in the back. I believe something dropped or cracked in the back. There seemed Uh-oh. to be quite an alarming oh, no. emotion by everybody in the back. All eyes went to somebody. Is everybody okay back there? We actually had to delete a video yesterday because we found out that it, not everybody was okay in the video. Yeah. Sounds like something potentially happened in the back here. I hope everybody's all right. Nick is pissed off. His light fell. and Get this his goddamn hand. axe out of here. His We're trying hand. to run a professional show. This <laughs> shit's falling over. Oh, what the geez. hell's going on? Uh, it was a full nightmare back there. Uh, but in... Mac Jones first day as starter for the New England Patriots Mm -hmm. because Cam Newton is being held away from the facility for five days due to a re-entry process misunderstanding that happened between Cam Newton and the Patriots and the NFL and the NFLPA or Cam Newton and the Patriots and then the Patriots and the NFL and the NFLPA were all on one page. Depending upon whose report or uh, potential out Come, like whoever you listen to on what it could be. Did the Patriots know this and let Cam leave so that they could just hand the starting reins right over to Mac Jones and see how he's going to be? And then they're kind of baby face too because Cam kind of fucked this up. It was yeah. a misunderstanding. That could happen. We're not saying that did happen. No. I don't think that. I think what had happened was was a miscommunication between Cam Newton and New England Patriots on what was going to happen. Now, I'm not saying it's New England's fault and they didn't say like, hey, Cam, you have to get tested at these particular sites that we are telling you. And he got tested at another site. Or did Cam say, yeah, I will do that, and then went to another site. Who knows if we'll ever find out the truth and who was right in this whole thing. Whatever the case, he's out for five days. He cannot be happy, especially in his quarterback competition after what happened last year, COVID, no weapons at all. Since then, the Patriots spent $150 million in one day to add weapons. Probably a good time to be a quarterback now as opposed to it was last year. Yeah. With that being said, 
I'm sorry for Cam. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. I don't know how it happened. A lot of people are saying not be sorry because he, he isn't vaccinated, so he chose this whole thing. Whatever your standpoint is, I'm talking strictly from a football perspective in a quarterback competition when you can't compete for five days. It is not good for you in competition when somebody else goes out and potentially does well. Mac Jones is balling today. Yeah. yeah. I guess Let's he's go. absolutely balling. Ben Volen, Volen, mm-hmm. Volen, Volen says Mac Jones with two straight drives and team drills. And this is against the Giants, I believe. And each ends each one with a beautiful touchdown pass. Comes off the field to high fives from teammates oh, and yeah. a fist bump from McDaniels. You can see the confidence growing. All the rhyme, says Ben Oof. Volen. So he threw a touchdown in practice against another team and his teammates high fived him. So, okay. Huh? Mm-hmm. Huh? Offense coordinator said, hey, Good work, dude. Hell yeah. Wow. Confidence wow. is growing. Uh-huh. But I will say, after that first game where 31 teams hoped that Mac Jones looked like absolute dog shit, and I put out a tweet that said, it appears as if Mac Jones is not going to stink. Just nope. didn't say he was going to be great. Didn't say he was going to be good. Just said that it appears as if he's not going to stink, which is what we all hoped. I got attacked, obviously, because everybody hates the Patriots and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. It's a preseason game. You can't. I Believe me, I'm... I'm Big time proponent of it's tough to judge strictly off the of preseason games, but Mac Jones with five days here to be the starter. Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels, everybody in that building is going to treat him as the starter. What will this look like if Mac Jones is the starter? He's a rookie. We haven't had a rookie starting quarterback in a long, long time. He's brand new here. We Cam's been around. Everybody loves Cam now because of what happened with Cam. Literally, they are set in a position where nobody in the locker room can't even. Like, it's not like a, hey, Cam's better. Cam's not even in the building. They were somehow able. Now, they didn't do it on purpose, but in a situation, they're able to see what the building will look like with Mac Jones as a starter for five days. That is quite a weapon for Bill Belichick. He's going to know a lot more about Mac Jones than the Niners will know about Trey Lance yeah. if Jimmy G's not there. Like, I think this is a massive, massive opportunity for Mac Jones. And I'm not the only one, by the way. Bill Belichick was asked, is this a great opportunity for Mac Jones? He said, it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, normally, Bill Belichick would say, well, it's a great opportunity for everybody that's in an NFL training camp, and that's what NFL training camps are, is a great opportunity to make the team. And that, there would be a chance for like a full diatribe about why your question was a dumb question. It's an NFL training camp. You could potentially make, at the bottom of this, four hundred dollars to $800,000 a year. Everything's a great opportunity. You know, Bill Belichick could have scorned the reporter that asked if this was a good opportunity for Mac mm-hmm. Jones. Instead, he said it is. And I think that's because we all understand they're seeing if Mac Jones can be the guy right now for the next yeah. five days, and Cam Newton is literally nowhere to be seen. Well, and him not scorning the reporters makes you think, oh, wow, Bill Belichick must be in a pretty good mood if this is how he's, you know, replying to people oh, and not burying I was everybody. thinking, did he lose it? You know, no, like, well, that, well, it wasn't me. A lot of people were thinking, did he lose it? Are you kidding me? He was squatting 500 pounds last week. Yeah, you're right. But you're also, right. Valid. <laughs> valid. And also, this is still uh, New England. The joint practices start tomorrow, so he's throwing ah. against dudes that, you know, have seen him, which is good. He did throw a deflect to pick six to Devin McCourty. Just have to throw that out there. Uh, I can't be ball washing the, the entire brakes. time. Pump the brakes. So he did have one. It was a little pick behind. Six. It wasn't just an interception. It was a pick six. Well, he just gave up points the other way. Yeah. It, it was a little behind Gunner apparently. Uh, went off, went off, have it. It. Went off have Gunner's it. hands. It. Went off Gunner's hands. Got to make the catch. Doesn't matter how. If it hits your hands, you got to catch the ball. Everyone knows that. What, is Gunner trying to get Mac Jones cut? Does Gunner like Cam Newton more? Whoa, wow. he, he was with him last year and yeah. they had the number one special team unit because of it so maybe but i think it just all it, it bodes well like to your point we, you get to find out like mac jones can he be in the locker room and shoot the shit with anyone team can? meetings yeah team meetings offensive meetings yeah. hey what are you seeing here he got 31 reps or something like that yeah. what, yesterday or yeah. something like that yesterday. in practice i mean that's with the ones like that's a there is they get a full evaluation and every coach and player has basically said like the practices if somebody's gonna make the team All right. The games, I think, are a big deal for people that are maybe aren't going to make the team or on the bubble can have a little juice, a burst, and they maybe find themselves on that team or another team like the games in preseason, I think, are big for them. But if somebody's on the team, the practices, everybody says the practices are where we're getting a lot more evaluation than the games, especially for the guys that are going to make the team like Mac Jones is going to make the team. I mean, they're going to be able to test him, put him in different situations when the lights come on. Can Mac Jones show up? I think he's proved in his life that he will be able to do that. Maybe the NFL is a little bit different but practice reps are huge and now they're not having to split anything nope they're getting a chance to see him in every situation i mean it is 
It stinks for Cam Newton. I, I, it does, It stinks yeah. for Cam Newton, but the people that are against Cam Newton said, well, Cam brought this upon himself yeah. and blah, blah, blah. But then he could also say, well, New England could have said, like, hey, you can't leave, actually, it because does, right. because it is an mo- automatic five-day recess. You're not allowed to be around. It's happening in Buffalo right now. Yeah. Cole Beasley, who you know, Ooh. is a uh, accomplished wide receiver in the NFL, uh-huh. yep. rapper, yes. sure. and outspoken anti-COVID vaxxer, right. uh, who has been the target of a lot of... Vitriol? I think so, but also support, right? Because I think yeah. anytime you Both. go into that political world, right. you get the people that Both are behind sides, you. Yeah. But he's gotten a lot of hate from this as well, from a lot of people, but I assume there's a lot of people behind him as well that are in his uh, particular department, which, by the way, that is politics. Yeah. They just yell, <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah. And when you jump into that, that's... What's going to happen? He did that. He even made a song about it. Yeah, he even ra- made a uh, diss track about COVID vaccines, basically. Yes, he did. And that was just a couple weeks ago. Now, Cole Beasley of the Buffalo Bills has to be away from the Buffalo Bills for five days due to the reentry process thing because he was around somebody who works for the Buffalo Bills in the medical department who is fully vaccinated, had COVID. Uh, Cole Beasley, not vaccinated, got tested after the interaction with the vaccinated person who has COVID, did not have COVID. Two tests, I guess, said that. So this is going to feed Cole Beasley, by the way. Yeah. Oh, so the person that was vaccinated actually got COVID. We were hanging around each other. I don't have it. He still has it. Tell me. Hmm. But, so this is just going to feed Cole Beasley. Okay. Yeah. This is just going to feed Cole Beasley supporters and all that thing. But one thing that we do know, Cole Beasley has to be away from the team for five days. He's probably going right into the booth. Ooh. Look for a remix to that yeah. COVID vaccine diss track coming out very, very soon. It's insane right now because these five-day things, is it just for the non-vaccinated players? And are they doing this as the NFL so they can be like, hey, look, this Gotta can't happen. Gotta get vaccinated. Is that why they're doing it, you think? Or is this for, is this just like, because if a vaccinated guy has it who's an athletic trainer and medical staff and he doesn't spread it and they don't have it, why do they have to miss days? Or is it because it's dormant? I don't understand how these rules happen. It seems like it's all happening just so they can say, hey, you got to get fucking vaccinated. I think with the vaccinated people, what is it? They have to have two negative tests in a span of 48 hours and then then they're good to come back. So I think they do miss at least two days, but it's definitely not the five-day uh, like incubation period or whatever. So you got to have uh, 24 hours in between those tests? I think so. I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere, is that they need two negative tests within the span of 48 hours. Fox, you remember when those tests used to come back 72 hours later or whatever? Jeez. Worst two days ever, three days ever. <laughs> yeah, but then it started getting to the point where it was like four days to get those tests. Yes, start feeling bad. like shit. It's like, wait a minute, I got to cough. I'm sitting <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. For three days, I got to sit here and hope that uh, I'm not around anybody that pretends. I mean, that was a... Nightmare. Very thankful that the tests have gotten much quicker, yes. but with them getting quicker, what is the accuracy on them? Like, what if, what if somebody, if they get a fail or a positive test, they they probably retake, right? And then it, once it's guess. a second confirmed yeah. positive, and then it becomes a big deal or yep. whatever. Those original tests. Those <laughs> wild. Those were a mess. Those were a complete mess. I have no idea how or why or, I mean, there's people getting false. Positives, false negatives. Oh, yeah. They sent it to a different lab. That yeah, one time yeah, last year. That the lab. That's when everyone wanted to get tested, too. So we had to wait a good hour, sometimes two hour hours. Sometimes get we wouldn't tested. get it that night. We'd have to go back in the morning. Well, it is it is a very different testing shit, process. Shit. Now, I wonder, you know, and obviously the numbers go down as people stop testing for it. But I wonder how accurate the tests are and everything. Because like, like, Cole Beasley, let's say getting back in. What if Cole, who's not vaccinated, right, takes... A test and it's a false negative test. Yeah, and then he goes back in, and then it, like it could go both ways. A false positive gets somebody out. False negative could get somebody back in, and then what happens? And and how come Cole, if he's not vaccinated, didn't get it? If he was with the trainer and they were working in close proximity, do we know anything about this thing at this point? We're how far into this? And we got nothing. Yeah, we still have no idea. Absolutely no idea. And they're just hoping, you know, hey, if a guy does 
test positive for COVID. Let's test him again and just hope that maybe it's negative. And that's really, it seems like all they're going off right hey, now. Like they are, the, the NFL said, hey, we, you are going to get vaccinated. Yeah. I don't uh -huh. care how many examples we got to make. Wait wait for the first couple weeks if somebody has to miss oh, a game. Yeah. Oh, the NFL is going to come. Oh, there must have been a misunderstanding on that asterisk. Yeah. Mm. We said it was a $70 million fine. That's for the owner. For you, it's actually your entire season. Yeah. <laughs> right Sorry. here. Sorry. Didn't know if you saw it. The NFLPA agreed to it. There will be something like that, it feels. And that, obviously, that's a, a dramatic example. Mm -hmm. Right. But it'll be something. Like, Do you think Cam, Cole, all these guys that are alleged, not Cole is definitely not, but Cam allegedly, is he? Yeah, he's not. He's because not. he's not he wouldn't vaccinated. have to take the test and he wouldn't have travel. Yeah, bang. So, so because he has the five thing, we all know he's not vaccinated, you know. Like, because that Cam and Cole are doing this right now, the NFL or have to go through the NFL is so happy. Oh, so yeah. happy. So happy pumped. about this. They are so pumped. They're like, just like we thought. Oh, you you want to get vaccinated now? Huh? You want? Uh, huh? You want to get vaccinated now? Oh, you don't. Oh, not yet. Wait till you see what's next. It's almost like whenever uh <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say it. No, come on. No, no, because it's not like that serious. But it is like like when will you it's almost like they're just waiting, like, hey. We got a lot more shit that we can unroll. When are you just going to finally mm -hmm. just go ahead and get the vaccination? Come on over. We know what you, we know how you feel. Hey, that's great. Hey, good for you. Jerry Jones even said a lot of people are allowed to make their own decisions about their own body, but whenever their decisions start negatively affecting everybody else, you got to drop the eye and pick up the we. <laughs> I think Love what, that. I think that is what Jerry actually said. The NFL is doing that, I think, right now. And they're like, oh, five days out. Don't worry about it. Hey, Cam, come on back and sneeze one time. Wait yeah. till you see hey, you good sneeze luck. or hey, boom, you're gone for another six days i think that's only this is all i think now cam's probably not gonna i mean cam's being affected by this a lot more than cole probably yeah, yeah, yeah definitely for sure definitely yeah but cole, time. cole beasley's Cole's still gonna play first week and yeah. probably you know definitely get right eight, eight to ten targets yeah and on third down cole's gonna get the ball right boom yeah, first cole down. beasley's gonna get the ball on third down <laughs> yeah first game that is just gonna happen no matter yeah. how many five day little recesses he has to take right over. Cam Newton missing these days. Is He's going to lose his job. Invaluable. Massive. I mean, it is huge. So maybe Cam's the next guy that just comes out and says, uh, I got vaccinated because fucking hey, I lost yeah. my job. Yeah. <laughs> I had to. I lost my job. Well, and with Justin Pugh now saying like, hey, as a vaccinated player, we need to have more tests for the vaccinated players. It almost supports Beasley where it's like, hey, I didn't get vaccinated. Still getting tested every day. Still bringing up negative tests. And now you want me to go get vaccinated after the guy who was vaccinated almost gave me COVID? Beasley, much to the chagrin of a lot of people on the internet, but to the support of the opposite side of mm -hmm. said part, he is going to feast on this. Feast. Oh, yeah. Beasley will not miss. <laughs> you think he's, no, making, a, no, you think he's no, making a TikTok? No. Yeah. Did you get vaccinated? Nope. No. <laughs> Are you going to? No. Nope. Are you <laughs> sure? <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> oh my! Do we know if Doc Mike Osterholm swayed yeah. anybody in well, Minnesota? So Zim said, uh, Coach Zimmer did say that this is a great presentation. I, <laughs> Good job. I don't know. <laughs> we talked about that yesterday at length, and I think if you missed yesterday's show, you should go back and really listen to me and AJ <laughs> talk about. What the success percentage, uh, expected success percentage Here we go. should have been for old Dr. Mike through our research of outsiders that come in and speak to the team. A football, especially in training camp where it's 90 guys, so it's even more so like power of the mob almost. You're going in there. You got, I don't know, five to ten seconds. Yep. And that is it. And they say first impressions go a long way. <laughs> in that, in those particular meetings, you got five to ten seconds to really get your angle, your narrative, and also prove that you're worthy of being listened to in front of an entire team. And there has been some of the most sophisticated people, most talented orators in the history of speaking that have gone into some of those locker rooms and gotten bullied out <laughs> yeah. of it. It is, yeah. it is not, hey, I'm not telling you that I like it. I'm just telling you, like, this is reality. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if Dr. Mike was going to be able to go in there and maybe flip somebody who was being told that there was a $70 million fine coming and they wouldn't budge. But if Dr. Mike was able to go in there and talk, we might want to get him a Nobel fucking peace prize. <laughs> Good for Dr. Mike, even though Coach Zimmer said, I'm not sure how much it swayed anybody. You guys that. said most of those are at the end of the day too, mm. right? When like, guy, you've already had a full day's work. You've had the shit beat out of you. You've been sitting in meetings. You're just ready to get the fuck out of there. And yeah, Dr. Mike Ostenhausen comes in and 
Jesus. By the way, not me. Okay, I didn't get the right the but, kicked out of me, but that's why I think I'm a pretty good take on it because I got a chance to watch. Right. I'm still pretty with <laughs> you it. Feed yeah. guys body language. You know, <laughs> I'm like, still, yeah. Oh, uh, he no. Yeah, <laughs> this practice. guy's got no <laughs> shot. Joining us now, uh, president of an NFL organization who also was a player in some of these team meetings where outsiders would come in and try to speak to the group. A.J. Hawk and I said this yesterday, might be the most difficult crowd you have ever spoke to in your entire life. I'm excited to get his thoughts on this and how the entire business of running an NFL team is going now that we're about a year, year and a half into this thing. Ladies and gentlemen, former player, now president, Jason Wright. Yeah! Hey, I think gentlemen, I'm, gentlemen. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Y'all hear me all right? Yeah, you sound amazing. Zito was uh, telling me you're potentially muted, so I'm happy we handled that. You're a president. Of course you're going to handle that. Yeah, yeah a little adversity. I got that shit. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, Price, I got a question for you. Uh, when are you naming a new team name, dude? Mm -hmm. When are we doing it? You, uh, do you it said now? when or what or when? whom or what? Do you want to do it now? No, I do not. Ah, come on! I thought we had him. Hey, I saw the internet explode whenever these eight names went out there, and you had to react and say, excuse me, this is not the final eight. Just <laughs> the three are in here somewhere. How has this process been? I got a chance to see the making the brand, uh, you and Ron Rivera, and then the muted, like, I think we like these three or whatever. Has this yep. been more difficult, more fun? What has the process been like trying to decide a billion-dollar brand name for the next, I don't know, 100 years or so? That's, that's, that's Yeah, I think first, you know, yeah, next year we'll be in 90 years old as a franchise right so we're, we're going to announce this at our 90 year you know moment but uh, i think first it's been a privilege you know because i've gotten to understand how deep this shit is with our fans mm -hmm. you know it is it's their memories of watching in the basement with grandma and like that's what shifted when the name shifted and so it's a privilege to really steward all of that deep goodness and history going forward it's also been really fun um, because people are animated about this. You have people who are creative and creating content. You have shows like you all talking about this and taking both insightful and funny ass takes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it's been really good. It's been really, really good um, for us to get to know our fans because we need to do that anyway. It's, um, it can't be easy though. I mean, whenever we're thinking about how do we word a t-shirt, yeah. it's like, it is a pro like, how, how do we word a, a segment, which we're not a big segment. What do we even, ah, to be honest, we normally throw segments away because we can't think of a good enough name for it. It is a difficult challenge. Has, yeah. has Ron Rivera been a, in the video? We see him be a pretty active part of it, but he's been a pretty active part of this entire thing. Huh? Is there any other people? Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, he's, 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 he's definitely given us input just like everybody else, you know? Um, and there's a, a a core team of us who are thinking about it every single day, but it really is a community effort. It's Ron and the coaching staff. It's the players. It's the fans. It's the alumni. It's community leaders. It's people that we want to be fans because we want this brand to help expand the fan base. Uh -huh. It's sponsors and partners. We want to help it expand the business. So we're talking to business leaders. Everybody's engaged on this. Um, uh, and so everybody's got input. You lean in towards the name right now and has that changed a couple of times through this entire process? It's, there's been so many twists and turns. You know, I wrote um, recently, gosh, a few weeks back on how we weren't going to go with the name Warriors, which for me was an early favorite. I liked it. I thought it had all, so many aspects of what would work for this franchise, what Ron wanted to build on the field. It would help our business. But when we talked to the native and indigenous community, they were like, look, bruh, it's not going to work. It's too close. The history is too close. And like, you can go there, but you can be dead right yeah, <laughs> yeah, on this one. Yeah, and so yeah. we prioritize listening to them. And so that was a twist or a turn that we didn't expect. And so we actually are really doing this. It's not bullshit. And, and we are learning every single day about new things as well. And so where we are now is we're down to a very narrow few. Um, we're down to a, a final three that we're working through. And we're going to learn through trademarking and all of these different hurdles about how to get something over the line, what actually makes it through the filter. Are you scared that immediately upon you guys filing a trademark for a thing, the whole world's gonna be like, boom, you can't, like for instance, in the WWE, they can't, they can't even think of a character or a name because as soon as they file for a trademark, somebody on the internet's like, oh, WWE just filed for this. This is what this is going to be. And it kind of spoils everything. Are you just going to have to, you're going to have to send out, what are those, uh, red hair? You're going to yeah. have to send out red herons and stuff like that, huh? Yeah, there's a whole lot of misdirection that needs to be done here, you know, uh, to, to not really give away where we're going, which is the flip side of transparency. 
You know, you can only be so transparent to not shoot yourself in the damn foot, right? So, yeah, we're going to have to throw some misdirection out there. But honestly, what I'm more petrified of is going out with a name and then being in trademark court hell for three years because <laughs> we didn't do our homework. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I, I, I don't have time for that. Yeah, I don't have yeah. time for that. Yeah. And so that's what I'm more worried about. Um, I could understand that. We're talking to Jason Wright, president of the Washington football team. Uh, 90 years of existence coming up next year where we will learn the new or maybe keep the Washington football team brand going forward for the next hundred years. Jason, did you hear, um, I mean, you're on the business side of the NFL now, but obviously a massive part of the business side is the COVID world in the protocols and everything like that. Yep. Going into this season, we were the last city to announce uh, that we would have a full stadium. I don't know if that's because of local authorities or what it is. What yep. are all the rules being set now? Are those by teams themselves looking out for their employees, their team, their fans, or is it mostly just local government like it was a year ago, kind of making all these decisions? You are a smart man. You've got it nailed. So I think generally speaking, we in the NFL across all teams, we feel confident after last year, we know how to put together a safe environment for our fans. And so as far as we can control it, we're going to be open for business, not only because we think it's safe from a health and safety standpoint, but also we think it's just good for the psyche of the nation to be able to get out to football games, to actually experience the rhythm of life that they had before. And because we can do it safely, we should. That said, each and every individual team is working closely with local authorities and local leaders. And ultimately, they're the ones that get to make the call. And so we have great partners in Maryland and Prince George's County to help us uh, work that through. Hey, uh, Jason, we just got a, almost a hang up button on you. We didn't expose your number, though. Thank God. I do not think that's good news. I mean, geez, there's going to be, hey, there's going to be people calling with ideas on what you should be <laughs> yeah. in that team. Um, whenever you think about this upcoming season, is this a, and I know you and other NFL presidents interact and talk to each other, You got and, and I enjoyed you saying like, hey, it's good for the psyche of the, it is, man. Like how much is, yeah. how much is that really being talked around about around the NFL? Like, hey, we have, uh, not only is obviously this a business and, you know, that whole thing and we have a game and everything, but also the NFL for a long time has been like the entertainment for a lot of America. And I think getting a chance to get everybody back into the stadiums is huge just from a mental standpoint on right. beating, hopefully, on the other side of that. How much is that talked about amongst all the teams? Is, is that kind of like, a, hey, we we owe our communities this type of stuff, so let's not get it wrong? Is that a real feeling around yeah, the Yeah, yeah. I mean, I talk about it a little bit with some of my closest peers that I talk about. About, that I talked to in the league. Um, but definitely in Washington, we talk about that all the time as a leadership team. Me, Dan, Tanya, and the rest of our leadership team, that's on our minds all the time. I think we definitely play a bigger societal role than I, I realized coming into this. As a player, I was like, yeah, I know this is important, but you know, I'm just I'm I'm gonna collect my check and stay on the roster, right? Like yeah. I, I didn't realize the importance that this really played in um, in our broader culture. And so, you know, that's why even the, the little things we're doing of, you know, the proper mass policies and making parking better and having better local food vendors and authentic and local entertainment, like even just little innovations like that in the stadium make a difference for folks. So not only can they get out and do these things that make them feel normal, connected to something bigger than themselves, but also see themselves represented in it. I'm so happy it seems like there's a new generation going in there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I never understood why there wasn't, you know, like, hey, how come we don't have, like, I should experience the city that I'm going to, I think, whenever I go to a game. Like, hey, it's a celebration yeah. of your city, basically. And football is very much a, hey, our city's going to battle your city, basically. Yeah. And that is really. Exactly. That, that's it. That's real. That is very that's real. And the, and the experience should represent that. Like, I think, you know, we've got a, we got a ways to go here, but we're also thinking about our new venue and how we bring that in. But like when you come to the venue, you should you shouldn't be able to feel like you were in any other city. It should feel like D.C., Maryland, Virginia. The food should be D.C., Maryland, Virginia. The music should be D.C., Maryland, Virginia. You know, our entertainment team is dancing to go-go music for the first time in the history of the club. Like, those are the types of things that need to be done so that it's authentic and real. Hey, Wale's ready for you whenever. Oh, yeah. I, we oh, that's my guy. Hey. That's my guy. <laughs> hey, us too. Yeah. We talked to him. He, he knows the game, but I didn't know he played football at Robert Morris. He was a football. I didn't know that. He played football. He's a brilliant creative mind. Oh, He's yeah. one of our creative partners. 
Um, Smart. Uh, the people who advise him closely also advise me closely because I think he's tapped into how to do this right. And uh, he's a great partner to us. Oh, that's great news. That's great to hear. I appreciate the fact that you're utilizing the big brains that you have near you to maybe help shape this thing. Yeah, no question. Before the boys have a couple questions for you, we can't thank you enough for your time. I know you're very busy running a, uh, I don't know, a couple billion dollar business. <laughs> the... Um, did you hear about Dr. What was his name? Mike? Michael Osterhaus. Dr. Michael Osterhaus. As a former player, okay? okay. Dr. Michael Osterhaus. Osterholm. Osterholm. Doc, Dr. Mike. <laughs> okay, Dr. Mike is a good guy, by the way. Great, great guy. Went to school a long time. He earned that DR right there uh -huh. in the front there. But Dr. Mike was called in by Zimmer, uh, Coach Zimmer, to talk to the team. And uh, because the vaccination levels and everything like that, yep. it, and me and AJ's first thoughts were, that is the toughest room that guy is ever going to fucking walk into. <laughs> I mean, that is, he's got, that is a, a NFL locker room is a group of very successful people who are very stubborn and have their own thoughts. So we thought there's zero chance old Dr. Mike has any shot going in there and persuading anybody. Zimmer said, he did pretty good. I don't know if it turned anybody <laughs> around or whatever, but have you guys, because Ron Rivera was very loud early because because yeah. of everything that happened last year with him beating cancer and everything. Has has that whole thing, is it only going to get bigger, you think, the COVID protocol stuff with this vaccination thing in the NFL? Because it's starting, the conversations are starting to get bigger as we get closer to the season. Cam's out five days. Beasley's out five days. There's Zimmer's pissed every day at his quarterback. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's only going to grow, right? And how does it end, you think, in your eyes? How does it stop? Well, I'll, I'll answer the first part of your question first of, like, what is it like to bring somebody in? Even when I go and talk to the team. Oh. I'm always I'm always ready in the back of my mind. Like if someone says some smart ass shit, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got like, go. I'm ready. I'm like I'm, I'm ready to come at you if you say something because you know that's how it is, right? They're just waiting waiting to get at you with something. But we we also brought in experts to help our guys. Oh, get educated. Oh and no 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 no, no 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 no. That was a good part. I, no no no. Hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on. We lost you. We lost you. Maybe more so, maybe more so than him. Hold on, we lost you. You're frozen. You're handsome, though, so you don't look terrible. A.J. Hawkins frozen. His face is oh, yeah. despicable. His, his hands are on Let there. the president know. It is uh, the Washington football team president. So there. We lost you right there. Sorry about that. That's our fault, not yours. We oh, will yeah. help to make it better. You said you guys, okay. talking to the room, then you brought some experts in? Oh, no. Yeah, I so said we brought experts in, too. And what and what I'm learning is that our, our folks, like, our – they're kind of smarter than we were when we played. <laughs> I feel like we were a bit of knuckleheads. We weren't tapped into the best and brightest information. And these guys really engage and they take it in. And so I do think Osterhaus, MO, whatever y'all call them, probably did a great job because the guys are willing to listen. We brought in Dr. Kazmikia Corbett, this dope sister who's a, a epidemiologist and physician who helped invent the Moderna vaccine. She spoke to our guys. Uh, and that really connected and helped some guys get there. So I think it, it it works and it will work. And I'm confident that the league and the teams and the guys ultimately are going to do what it takes to get this season done safely. Because not only do we all our livelihoods depend on it, but also what we talked about earlier. This is important for the fans, the public and their psyche. And I think everybody feels a bit of that civic duty as well. I'm so happy you're a president of an NFL team. It makes mm -hmm. no sense that you're the guy that's running it right now. It feels like you're supposed to be incredibly snobby, stuffy, stupid. Yeah. Uh -huh. It just feels like some of the decisions, you know, out of touch almost. It feels like you're supposed to be. You're doing incredible. I'm so happy a player is in your position because – I think it's really going to help not just Washington, but I think in the entire NFL, maybe with some decisions that are made. For instance, why don't you go back over to the football ops and tell them they need to not find Benny LeMay for that flex, 3500 bucks. I don't know if you saw that. He does I not. He, oh. He's University of Charlotte, I believe, yep. running back in, in Indianapolis. He did a run, flexed. Uh, he's probably not going to make our team. Our running back thing is big, but he'll be at least practice squad or somewhere else, hopefully. Mm -hmm. $3,500 fine for a Come flex. On. guy ain't even going to make that much money. A guy ain't oh, going to make that oh, That's as a, your as league. A former, as a former practice squad running back, I just my heart rate just went up. <laughs> yeah. Getting a, fine, getting a fine like that with what I was making, getting fired every other week. Oh, Lord. Um, yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't catch it. Um, I do know, like, you know, I was a I was a bit of a trash talker. I like to have fun. So uh, hopefully they land in the right sweet spot so that it's it's still entertaining. But, you know, the league is able the league knows what it's doing. They know what they're doing with 
what the public wants. And so hopefully they land in the right sweet spot. Yeah, it seems to happen every year with the point of emphasis. It gets uh, just absolutely ruined early. And then it's like, okay, we can both come kind of come to an agreement. And I think they almost do it so they can say like, see, you know what it could be like? We just showed you. All right. Mm -hmm. So we just made it. I think that is a little bit of that, which, by the way, good business. Go ahead, Ty. Jason, one of the last times we had you on here, it was like right after the fallout of the expose and the Washington Post and all that kind of stuff. And you had to deal with that almost immediately. At this point, do you feel like you can finally breathe and you're past that? And are you happy with the progression that the franchise has made since you took the job? And like, what, what more do you think you need to do to get to the point where you guys want to be? That's a great question. Um, yeah. And I want, I want to find all the wood to knock on here, but I do believe that, that we have jumped the shark when it comes to culture. And, and while it was a difficult season being in the context of COVID and not being able to help host fans last year, it did allow me and our team to fo focus explicitly on people and organizational health and culture for the most part uh. of last year. You know, uh, for, for, for good and bad reasons, we turned over 90% of the top two layers in the organization over the last several months. And that would be disruptive in a normal setting, but for us was necessary and has us in a great place with the most diverse leadership team in the NFL, people from backgrounds all across of media, entertainment and business, not just in football. And because of that, we're getting really collaborative minds on things. And I think our folks are starting to see a highly professionalized and innovative culture um, that can put their heads down and grind, that have the pulse of the fans. We've got a long way to go to show and prove. But internally, it feels like a completely different organization, even though maybe I'm you know, living dog years. I feel tired as hell, but it's been really good. I think it's only going to I think you're you know, this is like whenever you become actual president, they say you age yeah. pretty quick. I think Fair. whenever you became president of uh, the Washington football team. I mean, feels like the stress was damn near probably presidential. Yeah. I mean, it probably. I mean, there, hey, you were in the middle of it. Now you can't talk about it, obviously, but there was expose after expose mm -hmm. oh, yeah. after expose. No name. You got. And by the way, COVID. There's a worldwide <laughs> yeah. stoppage. What you have done, nothing short of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Uh, good luck this season. We can't thank you enough for joining us. Um, I hope you. You know, when you decide to pick a name or the group decides to pick a name, you know, I hope it's the right one, man. <laughs> I already know what you're talking about. Yeah. I already know what you're talking about. How about this? How about this? How about we find a way to make sure you're you're involved whenever we get to that point? Oh, so dude, like, yes. you should do you've like been, you've been you've been helpful in driving the dialogue. Let me find let's find a creative way to make sure you're engaged. Well, yeah, don't, don't put too much on me. I will react whenever you make the announcement. <laughs> don't worry about it. But if you would like me to say the name is without ever really knowing what the name is, I'm 100 percent. And you let me know. I yeah, appreciate let's figure, you. Let's, yeah, let's figure, let's figure out how we get you in it because you've been you've been helping a ton. I appreciate it, man. Well, I don't know if I've actually been helping or hurting you because I've been driving a little bit more. No, attention. the dialogue is good. Even if even if you even if you're 180 degrees off from where we want to land, you're you're engaging <laughs> our fans. <laughs> OK. All right. Good. You're engaging our fans and our fans talking about the name, the brand, what it means to them, what they want to see in the experience. That's what I need. That's the kind of dialogue I need, and you're helping me do that, so I appreciate it. Man, that's awesome. I'm so thankful to be talking about a player in a presidential role for a team about to make a decision that is going to affect the next 100 years of the entire NFL. Incredibly proud and impressed by you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, president of the Washington football team, Jason Wright. Thank yeah! you, sir. Good guy, dude. Great guy. Great. Good guy. Big brain. Yeah. Hey, very good at introductions. You voicing over the video of the release of what the team name will be might be able to play. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. I mean, it'll be a give and take. I'll tell them I'm going to have to know the name before everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's. <laughs> yeah. But you won't say it till the day before. Yeah. Of course. I yeah. won't say it. Of course. You give me it. that information. Nah. I won't nah. ruin it. I won't tweet it out. Listen, literally everybody knows me, knows that I'm not <laughs> supposed to know stuff. Because if I do, it's coming out. You know Could, what I mean? Couldn't have talked to Vinatieri for a damn near year. Couldn't talk to him for a year because I had no idea what was going on. Just like, hey, how you doing? Hope all is well. You know what I mean? Hey, by the way, I'm up to... Don't respond to this. <laughs> do not answer me. Yeah. 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 He called me one time and told me something about his son who was going to do something. And I answered. And I said, hello. And he goes, uh, hey, how you doing, man? I'm like, ah, oh, great to hear from you, dude. First of all, don't fucking tell me anything. Yeah. <laughs> that was literally how I, yeah. that was literally how I embraced him. I'm so scared of it. I mean, Aaron texted me. I, I literally, as I was reading the sources, say, Aaron told me this. I mean, oh, yeah. I appreciate that. We're a part of that. That's really cool that he said that. Who knows if it's real or not? Also, 
I mean, we changed sports gambling laws in Ohio around here. No, Dumbass not. show in the middle of Indiana doing mm. some very dumb stuff. We can't thank you enough for allowing us to do such a thing. You're listening and watching on YouTube. You're the absolute greatest humans of all time. On the other side of this four-minute break, we'll be answering some phone calls on the 5 Hour Energy phone line. That's one 833 mcfee We cannot wait to chat with you. throughout my entire life, whether it was driving me to practice, to go to work, the coaches that invested hours in me, everything I have done to get to this point. I got a whole town, a community, a family, a tribe of people watching me potentially live out my dreams that we all thought was gonna happen. And when I get to rock, I get a chance to carry eight motherfuckers that are playing for a team that is in the city yeah. that I went to college in. I carry eight people, have the biggest moment in my football career Maybe make a team, if not with the coach somewhere else. Hey, that guy's got juice, let's do it. Change the entire direction in the course of my family's life. <laughs> I can't be excited though. Nope. No. Nope. Don't even think Don't about you it. Fucking mm -hmm. dare. Are you kidding me? Are you all that just happened and everything I just said there and more is potentially happening in that one play? Don't even fucking think it. Get your fucking ass back in the huddle. You know Barry Sanders? Hey, Barry Sanders, he, he'd score a touchdown and he would just hand it to the ref and he was gone. Hey, why don't I? Well, Barry Sanders also won the Heisman, right? Yeah. He mm -hmm. was also like the all time leading <laughs> scorer in this whole thing. Barry Sanders was unbelievable, worked his ass off. Let's not get crazy. And Barry Sanders had the ability to act like he had been there before because Barry Sanders, by the way, had fucking been there before. And maybe Barry Sanders, the way he goes about business, isn't how everybody goes about business. Maybe there's a lot of different stories, a lot of different situations, a lot of different life events that lead to somebody acting differently than somebody that just acted, you know, almost robotic while being one of the most exciting and electric players in the history. Got nothing but love for Barry Sanders. Let's not get crazy. But there's a lot of people tweeting, act like you've been there before. It's like, you think this motherfucker's been there before? He hasn't. <laughs> this dude just carried eight people and maybe changed the entire life. He can't be excited. Aren't we a game of emotion? Aren't we a game of excitement? Why is this a fucking penalty? Hey, Goodell! Hey, eating your M&Ms? Sitting on the chair, being cool. You became my commissioner. You weren't, you weren't my commissioner. When, hey, you dance, you're fucking out. Your sock slide, you're fucking out. We don't want anything. We want robots, no emotion. Everybody hated you then, Raj. All right, everybody hated you. And nobody understood why you're trying to take the fun out of the game. You're doing it because you want to be able to just pluck and play. You didn't want to have to have players be brand names because then you could replace them easily. Okay, I understand the business side of it, but we all agreed the tribe has spoken that the game's better when people are excited. Some things are too much. All right, some things are way too much. There's, there were some dances that happened that looked a little bit more like basketball, where we're all like, there's no way that can happen with a full line dance. We get it, there was some. But it added to the game. The excitement added to everything. Now taking away this and making it a point of emphasis. And I'm not saying that there should be egregious, if something egregious happens, they should penalize them. Yes, please, it's not for the good of our game, not for the good of the league, not good for fans, not good for anybody. I understand that's gonna happen, but a point of emphasis means, hey, we're cracking down on this because we don't want it to happen anymore. And why are we targeting that as opposed to targeting something else I'll never understand. My commissioner, Roger Goodell, is gonna get to the bottom of this if Sam Ocho doesn't do it first. Yeah. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to that show. Big thanks to Jason Wright, president of the Washington football team, for joining us earlier. Always fascinating to talk to somebody that's running a damn team. Yeah. He's making a lot of big boy decisions too right now. I mean, this... 
him saying the, you know, the Washington football team has been around for 90 years. Damn. And we're announcing it on our 90-year celebration of what the team name will be going forward. I mean, I'm telling you, whenever we try to think of something, maybe just for a segment or so, it is very difficult to be like, okay, what's the right thing here? We never get it right. I don't okay. think we have yet. He is going to be tasked with getting it right forever with a fan base that's been around already for, what's 90 years? How many generations is that? Three, four generations? Three probably, mm -hmm. yeah. Four generations, three yeah. generations, whatever it is. Th four generations of fans have already been in there. Now you got to tell them, yeah, this is a good one here. Dude, good for, luck for the out next there. Ten. Good <laughs> luck, dude. That is what's crazy is like. Yeah, the next 10 I, generations. Him <laughs> thinking about it, like whether he likes it or not, like this will always be tied to him for the rest of his life. You know, like it, the, this decision will probably define his career. Not that he isn't going to do a bunch of other great stuff, but people will always tie him in with, oh, you remember when the Washington football team renamed? Like that was Jason Wright's decision. And there is no chance, no chance in hell he's got. No chance. No chance in hell. And getting it right. Or for some people. Yeah. There's, it, yeah. Half the people will hate it. Mm -hmm. At least half the people will hate it. Remember that thing, especially with three finalists there, there might be three different names. Washington football teams are already going to have some. Oh, yeah. There will be at least another one. And then whatever, if they pick, I mean, there is going to be people that are pissed. And he's going to have to sit there and be like, we think this is the best decision yeah. going forward. And he's, there's going to be people that love it. Okay, there's going to be people that absolutely buy in and enjoy it, and then there's inevitably going to be people that don't like it, and that's just, hey, that's big business, baby. That's business, baby. All right, we got to go to the phones. I have no idea. The system broke, I believe. I don't oh, know nice. anybody's names, uh -oh. but we'll go to caller on the first line here. What's going on? What do you want to talk about? Manny in Los Angeles. What's going on, Manny? Okay. popped up. Pat, boys, happy you feel good Tuesday. Ian's doing over there, huh? Hey, not too shabby on this uh, Aaron Rodgers Tuesday yeah. Eve. Tuesday. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, because there's a couple more Tuesdays. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh -huh, so fair. it's the Tuesday, Tuesday after Eve, next Eve. Eve. Come, yeah, yeah, sure. I think. All right, anyways. We're in man, the hole right now. We are. We are currently yeah. still down in the – we're getting into the batter's box, I yep. believe, next. But, Manny, what do you want to talk about, pal? Had a couple football things, but first I wanted to uh, t say that uh, I just celebrated a 36th birthday on Sunday. Shout out. H happy birthday. Shout, Shout out to you, Happy dude. birthday, Manny. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. Sorry. Thank you guys so much. And uh, then uh, yeah. recently I just got accepted to college. So out of all the thousands and thousands of college applicants that applied, I was chosen. So I had a quick question. Will you think we'll ever see a Pat McAfee scholarship contest for all us blue collar yinzers out here? Very. I actually have been giving scholarships to people for like the last uh, ten years or so. Thank you so much, Mandy, for calling. Uh, children of military families, Pat McAfee Foundation. I think we've been out. I think it's seven hundred thousand dollars in scholarships or something. Like that. Damn. I think so. I'm not hundred percent sure, but shout out to Manny. Congrats. Yeah, birthday, Manny. Happy Manny. Happy birthday, Manny. Doing? I thought he was gonna give himself a shout out at the end of that too. Mm -hmm. Me too. I thought that was gonna be a new thing. Like, hey, I just got married. Shout out and everybody. Oh, shout, oh, shout, out, shout out, out, shout out, shout out. I thought it was gonna be a new thing. Shout out to Manny for calling and for getting into uh, a university. What I would say is, unless you're gonna be a doctor or a lawyer, Manny, get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Now. Quick. What are we wasting? You're gonna. I mean, he's going to do something awesome. Manny's going to True, do something awesome. Probably. Okay, I know Manny makes good decisions. All right, mm -hmm. he calls into this show. He talks in this show. Shout out, shout, shout out. out shout out. 36 years old. He's going to school. Let's go. Hey, let's go ahead and go back to school. Let's get everything done, Manny. Here we Manny. go. You got to love the uh, the old. Hey, I thought it was your birthday today. Oh no, I thought. Oh, I thought mine. we shared the same birthday. Oh yeah, it's my. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, happy birthday to me. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Happy birthday, Jay, by happy the way. Happy birthday, Jay. Shout out. Let's go to Chance in Colorado uh, before we get out of here for hour one. Chance, what's going on, bub? What's going on, Pat and the boys? Uh, just hanging out, man. I can't wait to talk about Trevor Lawrence last night and Jameis and Taysom, and then that's going to lead right into Zach Wilson. And oh. That's hour two, man. But right now, I'm so, so pumped to be chatting with Chance in Colorado, obviously. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Colt Nation first. Shout out. Shout, shout out. out. Shout out, Colts. I was also going to ask about if you think Trevor Lawrence's offensive line will actually be able to stop the rush and not turn him into a Joey B. Great question there by chance. I don't think we should worry about Joey B. What we should worry about long term. Andrew Luck. Mm. Yeah. You know, that is, you know, he got beat up, beat up, beat up so much so that he actually, I have picked terrible songs. Oh. <laughs> 
This thing has been a problem the last two days. <laughs> well, that computer's a piece like, of shit. Like, that's a good song. But oh, it, it is. Does, David Morris's lyrics are so good, I don't want to be... Hour two's on the other side. It'll be better, I promise. Jesus. Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason. It is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. God, right. and if you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie. That seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted, and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world, for me, that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated. Uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed and that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy it's never easy and I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week it's never easy and your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is, is a deep uh, fear of failure, uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. I have a surprise, obviously. That's what this show is all about. Uh, we have Boots on the Ground in Cleveland, who I assume knew this was going to happen what? all along. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Cleveland, Mr. Jason Glazer. Your thoughts on Kyle Pitts to Atlanta fine, sir? Oh, there's a delay. Well, uh, first and foremost, Pat, I'd like to say, hey, listen, thanks for having me. Cleveland is beautiful this time of year. Granted, it does smell like a mixture of poop and diarrhea and sewage. Jesus. Uh, it doesn't smell great down Jesus, here. Jesus. But I'll tell you what, 27 years in this thing, I fucking live for the draft. Love being down here. Love being in the Cleveland. Uh, but yeah, Kyle Pitts, listen, what do you want me to say? I knew this two weeks ago. Really? I mean, do we need to do this whole fucking song and dance? Okay. I'll give you guys one through 32 if you, if you want to know. You know, <laughs> do you want to have fun? That's nice. You want to not know who's going... Uh, but yeah, I had this two weeks ago. You know what I'm wondering is if the guy you had in your studio, 
Mad Mel Kuyper. I know that sorry son of a bitch whoa, didn't have this. Whoa, Mike's not, no, did Mike's not plugged in. Whoa. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, I actually just explained no, it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, yes, I did. I had this. I did. I did. Yeah, no, I did. no, you didn't. I, did. you I didn't. had this. I, I had you it. Didn't. Trust me. Can you I didn't. talk for Christ's sake? Okay, fine. Fine, yeah. Can Go I ahead. talk? Okay, Go yeah. Like Jesus. I said, Kyle Pitts, unbelievable no, talent. No, you didn't. You didn't fucking have this. Yes, I did. You sad sack of shit. Jason. I know it. I looked at the mock draft. Jason, please relax. Oh my God, Jeez. had no idea it was gonna get like that. Sorry about that, Mad Mel. Obviously, there's a little bit of uh, content there. He's saying you don't know your ass for a fucking hole in the ground, though, Mad Mel. Oh. How do you feel about that from Jason Glazer live in Cleveland? Well, classic move. You know, Glazer looks like he's getting ready to go to a goddamn titty bar or something like that. I mean, dress up, pal. It's the NFL draft. Look at me. I'm dressed to the nines. You know, you look like an asshole. I mean, eh, just eh, get him out of here, can we? I mean, is he is he gonna stick around? Or can we get him the hell out of here? I think is his uh, microphone still. On Jay, can you hear us? Jay, is everything good back there? Listen, fuck you guys. I'm out of here. I'm I'm going over to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm going to hang out with D. Snyder and Twisted Sister. Are you serious? Okay, Jason, (laughs) sorry. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, Jason Glazer. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. (laughs) Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. Hour two here on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. <laughs> and YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show will begin immediately following this twine beat drop. Yeah. There it is. Here we go. The Hammer Down boys have joined us in studio. How you guys doing? We still winning oh, bets. Oh, we still winning bets or what on this Tuesday? Yeah, I, I mean the uh, the Jags coming back to cover in the hundred yeah. inning was criminal last night. Thanks, <laughs> CJ Beathard. Peace we all kind of saw well, that coming, didn't we? What do you mean? Yeah, we all. As soon as you they guys scored all, eighteen points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though, as soon as you all were dancing on the Jags' graves early, I mean, Gumpy was in my spaces last night. Oh, I'll bet on the Saints or something like that, and somebody else. Hey, the better team. Dare he's probably had better team oh, and everything. As soon as I heard that, I actually live bet Jacksonville Jaguars. Wow. Yeah, I live okay. bet last night preseason football. I don't like doing it. I don't like betting on preseason football because you can't really tell anything. But these these preseason games, I don't know how you guys are putting actual predictions out there, Gump. The Jags do stink. They're bad. Very bad. Hey. Urban Meyer might be uh, having a Papa John's on a golf cart halfway through game one. Okay, so that's Gumpy's take <laughs> of yeah. Hammer Down. You can watch Hammer Down 15 minutes after this show ends at youtube.com forward slash Hammer Down. They're giving out winners. What? How'd you guys do last night? Not great? Two and three. Soccer was oh, good. Oh, no. Baseball wasn't great. Tough night on the diamond. Oh, shit. No. You spanned three sports, soccer, football, and baseball yeah. last night? We'll be back tonight. All right. Hey, can't wait to see you get back on that heater that you've always been on. Diggs, how'd you do last night? One, two, and one. Okay, uh, so hammer down boys are down a little bit. Which is good. Yes, last night, yeah. Yeah, it's good because football season's right around the corner. That's right. right. So we you need to get all these L's out of the way now because the dubs are coming later. And you know, in the Colts locker room back in the day, the original uh, not the original, the regime that I was drafted into, the Bill Polling Peyton one and everything like that, I was very lucky to be there. Uh, actual statement after preseason games, and it was reiterated by Reggie, I think last or two nights ago on Twitter. Uh, let's not waste our wins in the preseason. Blah, blah, <laughs> yeah. the, the Colts are a notoriously terrible preseason football team. Literally the first time the Colts have been 2-0 in 27 years, okay? Damn. Let's not waste our dubs in the preseason was an actual mindset and a mentality. I don't know if the fans felt the same way or the media did, <laughs> but in the locker room that was actually said. So that's what you guys are doing. Let's not waste these wins in the no. preseason. Let's go, boys. Hey, thank you for doing that, fellas. Well, Come on. Thank you, Come boys. On. We appreciate you guys. Get back to that diamond. We'll see you at regular season football. Joining us now to talk about Urban Meyer and uh, maybe Urban Meyer's future after watching last night's Monday Night Football game. Um, good friend of Urban Meyer. Yep. Co-host of many shows with Urban Meyer. Yep. Uh, from Ohio mm-hmm. State cult that Urban Meyer also is a part of, ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Yay! Yay! Hey, 
it's a good look. About? It's a good look today, wow. dude. Well, Steve Jobs about turtleneck though, just long sleeve bike. You look fascinating today. You look very interesting. Are you going to speak somewhere? I, I am not. I did have a little speaking thing last night, but I've worn. I think I wore this probably three days ago. Like it's nothing different. No, I didn't uh, see it. I, I must have so. missed it three days ago. It would have been on Sunday, so that's probably why I didn't see it. That's just, <laughs> let's talk about. Okay. All right. All right. Don't be an <laughs> asshole. All right. That's on me. I apologize. There's no, really. Uh, last night, did you watch that game? Even though you had a speaking engagement, did you get a chance to see Urban Meyer on Monday Night Football? I did. A lot of people did, and I think a lot of people were saying, "Hey, it looks like Urban Meyer has no idea what the fuck he's." signed up for do you you get that accurate uh reading from everybody or do you think that's just how urban is handling the game and this is kind of how he's going to be until they're good well it definitely feels like that and when you look online and, and you see and i actually watched the first quarter at buffalo wild wings with my son we had, had practice so we went right there to get and we saw we got there right at kickoff nice. and first off before you get into urban I used to call I call it BW3s, but oh, yeah. everyone says that's wrong. Wow. No, yeah, well, I remember that. BW3s was way back, though, because what was it? Wild yeah. and Wonderful Wings. Wet, right? yeah. Buffalo yeah. Wild Wings and Weck or something it used to be. That's all, it's BW3s to me, but then when I say that, people look at me because they don't know what I'm talking about. So I grew up in Pittsburgh. We did not call it BW3s. We called it B-dubs, yep. but at West Virginia, everybody that went yeah. to West Virginia, they called it BW3s, and BW3s was the only place you could shit about 1.32 a.m. Really? Nice. Yeah, in the whole town. Yeah, run down to BW3s, you got an open toilet. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so that's where I heard BW3s. <laughs> Has to. That was the first time I heard it. Yeah. Right? Hearing you say that, by the way, just took me back to about 1.32 a.m. on High Street down there in Morgantown. Was, oh, no. Gotta oh. get the BW3s. Oh, oh. Oh. Code red. Uh, yeah, you got one diner BW3s. <laughs> Shout out to Buffalo Wild Wings. But anyways, you watched first quarter of B-dubs. Did you get a chance to hear the Monday Night Football crew? Did you get a chance to hear any Urban Myers interviews beforehand? I, I was very fascinated. I actually texted you and said, what I like Urban Meyer, because I was listening to his press conferences, and uh, he was giving some answers media, you know, about the competition between Gardner Minshew and Trevor Lawrence and everything. And as I was hearing him answer the media people, I actually started thinking to myself, like, I, maybe I like this guy. I, I don't because of what he said about me out of nowhere. I'm not even on contract for a show, and he takes a shot at me in an interview, and it makes its way back to me and everything like that. But, you know, so we kind of started on rocky terms or whatever. But after listening to him speak, I was like, maybe I'd like this guy. I think I would like playing for him. Do you think that's going to be the case in the NFL, or do you think he's potentially going to bow out before they get that? It seems like they got a long road still. they yeah. they got a long yeah. road to go still. And it's just preseason. It could change completely. We might be overreacting, but I think everybody was watching last night going, does Urban have any idea what he signed up for here? It, it does seem – it is a bit scary when you watch it and you see everything that went on and how good the Saints looked. I mean, are the Saints just that good? Is their defense that good that they can overpower the Jags' O-line every time? It does have to be talked about that the Saints' defense is really fucking good. Like, very, mm -hmm. very – the Saints' defense is very good. Trevor Lawrence made a couple big-time plays, right? He made a couple big-time plays that if you're watching as a Jaguars fan or as a Trevor Lawrence fan or whatever NFL fan in general, you're like, oh, that guy – he has a chance to be great. Like, he has a chance to be really good. But much like what we saw from Joey Burrow last year, it seems like we are not going to find out what his actual ceiling could be this year, at least, because he might be getting his ass beat. But yeah. could it be that the Saints' D-line is so good and that's the whole It just – I was Probably a little bit of both. Probably I, a little bit of both. Yeah. From that. And I, I try to ask myself, too, like, are, are people overreacting? Like, it's preseason. We always say, like, preseason doesn't really mean anything. But – this year does feel different. I like I said before, I was excited to see the rookie quarterbacks play and with Trevor Lawrence. Like I don't think it's really anything he's doing wrong. He, he's getting blasted. He's taking the shots. He's he has a couple throws. The one where he's rolling out and he just makes it look effortlessly, like rolling out to his left. That stuff's impressive. Uh, I just don't know how successful they'll be. Like if you can't protect them and you can't run the ball, you're screwed. You have no chance. Yeah, and I understand and I appreciate it. It seemed like they came out with a little different, you know, edge. Ooh. To them. There was a couple of tackles. Man, you know, it's Urban Meyer's big word is, "Hey, we're going to be on the edge." All right, we're throwing around this word "elite" around. <laughs> Remember he said that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The owners actually own a a, w, w, a yeah. company that is yeah. all about being elite. <laughs> kind of odd. So he came. Hey, yeah, fuck it. Everybody's saying this elite word. We're, we're trying to be on the edge. Now I think he's come back down to elite because it's a great way to describe things because there is levels to being good and elite is one that you're trying to get to. The, the entire Trevor Lawrence experiment, though, in looking at the stats of Monday Night Football had, Andrew Luck won 11 games his rookie year okay, as the number one overall pick because when you're the number one overall pick, you're going to a team that isn't good. Now, we... 
lost Peyton Manning that particular year, and there were some other things we went through in 14. Dan Orlovsky tried to ruin the Andrew Luck thing, yeah, actually, please. at the end because we are getting hot and playing good. So I think our team was much, much better than the record indicated the year before. We just so happened to lose our entire offensive piece in the middle of training camp and then Kerry Collins and Curtis Payne. Or, I mean, it was just, there was a lot there. So Andrew won like 11. Everybody else wins like five games, six games, yeah. four games. Like in the history of number one overall picks, there is not a lot of success. So I wonder if Urban Meyer knows that stat, if they're talking to Trevor about that stat. He says, and everybody's saying the reason why he won't name a starter down there is because he doesn't want Trevor to go out there, get blasted, lose his confidence, and be ruined forever, is what Urban said. I, I, or what people said Urban was alluding to, basically. When Trevor was asked about it, he said, that would be a bad business just to hand me over the starting job. He likes an organization that competes and everything like that. My big thing is, Urban had a great TV job. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Urban's legacy is already built. Hey, this guy, <laughs> top three, top, I'll say three because Nick Saban's one, and I don't know who, number. somebody will have their own number two or whatever. Mm -hmm. Top three college football coach of all time? Yeah, one everywhere. I think that is very fair to say. I, I, Urban's people might be pissed that I'm even saying three, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah. I'm just saying it because I have not done enough research. At what point, because... He had it all when he was at Fox. Every coaching job that was opened, Urban, do you want this job? No. Okay, do you want this job? No. Do you want to do TV? Yes. Do you have national championships everywhere you want? Yes. Are you already cemented in stone as being the greatest? Yes. Did you see other college football coaches that are similar to you go and fail? Yes. Okay, so you take the Jacksonville Jaguars job, and allegedly you say, all right, I I'm going to need you guys to go all in here. I need new buildings. I need control. I need this. I need this. I need this. And Khan's like, you got it. Hey, fucking, you got everything you potentially want. What if they just stink? Like, will Urban own that? Well, Urban, he'll have to, right? I mean, he'll yeah, have to. Yeah. I mean, what else, what else can he do? Like, he knew that. He knew he was taking a big leap. It's like, how many times have I brought up Chad Johnson and his boxing match and afterwards when he talked and he got emotional, like, and he was proud, like, he took a shot and he was gave, like, a, an inspirational speech. Now he was dinged up a bit too. We know that. Maybe and a dump know, probably of dopamine. There was probably quite yeah. a dopamine dump there where he was. But I respected the fact that he's like, hey man, like I'm not scared to get knocked out on national TV. Like you know, you could be a, a meme for the rest of your life. Like I respect when people aren't scared of that. And Urban knew coming in, but he, I think he knew it was an uphill battle as well. But <laughs> what do I say? Coach is coach, man. And it doesn't matter how great the TV gig is, how good the ratings are. Like I think coaches are. They need coaching to be fulfilled like that's what drives them that's what whatever it is like trying to find a way to get a little edge is everything that their whole brain like revolves around i hope he has success just, i i hope he has success i honestly do and it's in the afc south and everything like that but that team just being completely rebuilt basically in urban's eyes you know what i mean like yeah. and him not be it's just like this is quite no think about it it's got to be fat you know you we would say like oh how much how much time do you think you, they give them to make to to prove like that they're they're going to to be a contender? People, oh, I don't know, two three years. We're talking after the second preseason game that it's a mistake. Everything's wrong. Like his legacy's no, done. Like, no, that's no, what, not, the, his the, legacy's that's always what it feels in, like. Some people are saying. Yeah, the internet is definitely doing that. His legacy in college football is intact forever. I'm just saying, at his age, and I don't know how old he is. I know he's been through multiple health scares, but like mm -hmm. he at his age. And, you know, the life he was living, doing TV. Like, Cushy. Like, yeah. And I understand that coaches have to coach, but I think with TV, he still gets the reasoning to watch film. Like Gruden, you know, the Fired Football Coaches Association of America or whatever, he used to go watch film. And he said it was for TV and everything like that. Urban was still able to break down film and motive. He was giving speeches to Ohio State every weekend on that big noon kickoff. I mean, yeah. he, was, he was still doing coaching without all of that. He was on a sideline of Ohio State games with a whistle, I think. Yeah. yeah. While you still there, so he was still getting like all of it, except for the actual, you know, team meetings in the locker room after a game and the one on ones and everything like that. So maybe he did miss all of those moments that can be, that can't be duplicated anywhere else. I don't think, except for in those moments, you know, whenever you all work together and get there. But man, the, I think, I mean, it's second preseason game. Okay, we got to fucking relax, but we also got to do a show every day, especially the day after the preseason game where we learn a lot about Urban and Trevor. 
it feels like this is going to be a road now in his urban core. Like back at Utah, didn't he have to build that program, I assume? Yeah. Like he's going to have to build this thing. And by the way, building it isn't just like being a better recruiter or a better coach. It's like, okay, we got to be able to manage the salary cap better than everybody. Mm -hmm. We got to make people believe that this is the right place to spend their prime years of their career as opposed to potentially going somewhere else. We got to hope that Trevor Lawrence is a guy, which by the way, I think he does have all the traits to be a guy. Listening to him do interviews is awesome too. I don't know. We'll find out if he has a killer instinct, which I think you have to have in the NFL to win. I think you have to be a killer uh, when it comes to football, not in real life in the NFL. But I think it's going to be a. I mean, I guess you could be a killer in real life and be good at football too. Yeah, true, it has happened. It has. I guess it's happened too. Times. But I'm just saying we. I'm talking about killer on the field. Whenever yeah. you're a quarterback, I think you have to do that. That's going. I think it's going to be a long road. I might be completely wrong, but it feels like this is going to be a long 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 road it's jacksonville and that's not going to be able to turn around easy but is urban going to be able to stick with it that is all anybody's asking well he's obviously going to like set the expectations and like the culture and stuff like that but do you think it's detrimental with them getting trevor lawrence like he's not calling plays or anything so how rooted in in lawrence's development is he like it's different where you know trey lance goes and the head coach is calling all the plays like he's very hands-on with the development of his quarterback like do you think that's detrimental at all obviously lawrence has all the skills to be like a franchise guy but if when your head coach isn't the one who's necessarily developing him day to day like does that matter as much uh, i'm not sure and, and i I'm, i don't know in what you just mentioned there leads us into a great conversation that i'm very excited to have um but is like, if Trevor Lawrence was good, does that mean the Jaguars are going to be good? You know, like last year, Joey Burrow was good. The Bengals stunk. Yeah. No, but hey, but Trevor Lawrence needs to be good if the Jaguars have a chance to be good. He of can't course. be average and make the, ja and the Jaguars be good. Of course. And I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be good. But, like, I don't know if Urban Meyer's main thing is like, hey, I need Trevor to be good. Obviously, you need a quarterback to be fucking good. But it seems like there are some interesting – Got to hey, keep him healthy. He's got to stay he in the lineup if you want to you develop the guy. Bro, he, if he, he took gets, a lot of shots, man, in a preseason game. In a preseason wow. game. I mean, he was taking shots. His hand was hitting stuff. Yeah. Like, there was there was a, a potential. I mean, there was a lot of things where I was like, oh, my God. Like, they might not have made the decision on who's the starter yet, but there's a chance that yeah. it might have to be Gardner Minshew because what's going to happen with Trevor. But Trevor seems to be tough. Trevor seems to be handling it well, which is what Joey Burrow did. I just hope they have success. And I hope, honestly, I hope – I hope or I get to watch Urban Meyer kind of do his thing, and I assume that's what Urban Meyer's thinking as well. If I can turn around an NFL franchise, that's something that'll make me be much better than Saban in the entire mm -hmm. thing, in the entire coaching world, and everything like that. Let's pivot to the other team and to the point that Ty Schmidt alluded to. Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill are in a quarterback competition. Jameis started last night, balled the fuck out, yeah, okay? Yeah. Dropping balls in buckets. The internet and his haters and detractors say he threw it in double coverage. He threw a perfect ball to a guy that I didn't know existed, wearing number one, who had a massive night in Callaway. And whenever Michael Thomas gets back, how you doing, keep it moving, Ooh. they might have a real weapon set out there. Taysom Hill comes in immediately after Jameis throws two touchdowns. Not a great spot for Taysom some to come in no. and he did not look great either so that's a competition and Sean Payton's not only the head coach but he's also calling plays if you think about San Francisco you got Trey Lance and Jimmy G both in a quarterback competition obviously the head coach who's making the decision is also calling plays then you go to Chicago the head coach that'll be making the decision is also calling plays between Andy Dalton and Justin Fields right now in preseason the reason why I bring this up is Justin Fields I think in his first week had a Naked boot, throwback across the field. First preseason game. That play, guaranteed touchdown. <laughs> yeah, right guaranteed touchdown in the first preseason game. A misdirection throwback is going to be a touchdown. Nagy called that for Fields. Trey Lance got one of those as well. Mm -hmm. Did Jimmy G get one? Did Dalton get one? What were the plays that Sean was calling for Jameis as opposed to Taysom or Taysom instead of Jameis? The amount of potential control that these three have is not just like, oh, he's our quarterback, this is a starter. They're also the ones calling the plays for these particular players. It is a lot of pressure, I'd assume, on these three to get it right. They probably all have their ideas on who they want, how they want it, but I, does that go into their play calls, you think, in each one of these preseason games? I would assume yes, AJ. Well, I would assume whatever quarterback is in, you're going to run whatever plays you feel suit their talent. Like, they're the set that they have, their skill set, and what they do best. So, yeah, you want to move Justin Fields around more than you're going to move around the Red Rocket, Andy Dalton. But 
are you saying going back to Jacksonville just for a second? Daryl Bevel is their offensive coordinator. That's like I feel like people are saying they need to fire him. Like what is that? Oh. Dane Orslovsky? Didn't he say that? Yeah. yeah. Before we get okay. to that, okay, can yeah. we get back to this? Oh, do Do you think? And I'm like very fascinated by this. Do you think? Okay, that any of these quarterbacks, maybe the vets that get run out of town, will ever come and say it, fascinating play calls that old Fields was getting that yeah, I was not. Yeah. Do, do you Weird. think there's any of that that could potentially? Ha- I mean, that's what happens when you have a battle at the quarterback position. The locker room, coaches, literally everybody's like, my entire livelihood is dependent upon how you do. You need to know that. Okay, I don't care how young you are, how old you are, how immobile you are, how how mobile you are. I, you, My life depends on your success. So when each play that gets called, I wonder if each guy on the roster is like, oh, fascinating you give that play to Andy Dalton and not to Justin Fields, or wow, I can't believe you let Jimmy do that and not Trey, are you not trying to see Trey Lance do that? The amount of petty bullshit that could potentially come from this is insane, I think. I think that could be a real thing with the Saints and the Niners. But with the Bears, besides that one play, that's not a thing because Nagy has no fucking clue what a good oh, play call is. On. Okay, <laughs> which, so, which does lead on, us dude. back to Bevel. Uh, Orlovsky last night, he said, uh, this ish archaic. Yeah, <laughs> shit. And I, I, Dan Orlovsky let that one fly after a second preseason game. <laughs> All right, so, I yeah. mean, he, he rightfully so was attacked by people on Twitter. But Dan came on this show and said, if your offensive coordinator isn't utilizing every single foot that is on the field, they are they are hurting your team as opposed to helping. So I think Dan is talking about the styles of offense that are available right now with the way rules are and the way players are. If you're not utilizing that offense, you're kind of uh, you're kind of setting the game back or whatever. It's impossible to judge in preseason, but I know where Dan was coming from. Mm-hmm. The internet did not. The internet did not care about where Dan no. was coming from after week two of the preseason, AJ. I mean, it's definitely a bold statement for coming from Dan, but I would like to hear Dan's explanation because we know Dan doesn't just throw stuff out there. Like Dan never, I feel like, isn't the guy that just all of a sudden shoots from the hip and, and just lets it fly. He's He will back that up by film or scheme, everything, which I think me and you probably will not dive into the film as much as Dan might and study, and study the scheme that Bevel is running. But it does look weird. I don't know what – if you play Trevor Lawrence in the third week, I don't know what they should do. But, man, you got to find a way to w- win week one and try to quiet some people down. Okay, so the last quarterback taken num- number one overall to win opening week was – they gave us that. It was a long time ago. It wasn't luck. No, oh. it was a long time ago. 2002, maybe? Well, I don't remember. Jamarcus Charlie Russell? Russell? No, he wouldn't. No, no, they gave the stat last night. I was trying to remember it all. I was Bulger? on the spaces. I was Russell, on a- you, what, you're saying number one overall pick? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not easy. I guess, Because we're talking about number one overall pick because... David Carr? David Carr? It was. What year? It was David Carr. I can't remember. Two, that Texans. was 2002. So wow. Was that, did I say 2002? Yeah, you did. Fucking just yeah. trust it, dude. Just fucking say it. Let it fly, dude. <laughs> It's good. Yeah, why did I even question it? Why did I even question it? Wait, were you thinking David Carr? No, I didn't know it was David Carr. I was thinking a year because I since 2002, yeah. is that whenever I saw the graphic, I'm like, damn, it's been a long time since the number one overall pick won, and it's because you're going to such a bad team. Like mm-hmm. You're going to a bad place normally if you're number one overall. So the expectations on Jacksonville are always low. I think the expectations on Trevor Lawrence because he's in Jacksonville are rather low, but the expectations on Urban Meyer are, is this guy going to stick around until they're good? That's all the expectation yeah. is now at this point. Well, and he wins too, right? Because of the fact that he's not playing, calling plays. Because that tweet could have easily said they need to start thinking about a new head coach because Urban Meyer can't call a goddamn offense. But instead, it's you know it's all on Bevel, and he can he can kind of delegate to everyone else instead of taking the brute force on his own shoulder. When you're a head coach that isn't calling plays, you can blame somebody else. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. You, Easy. Head coaches can fire coordinators at the end of the year if something goes bad. I, I'm, I'm gonna talk to him. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. What do you mean to fire midseason? You can do whenever they want. Exactly. That's what, whenever you are, you know, not the person in charge of whatever, but there's a lot of coaches that get the head coaching job because of how good they are at calling plays or defensive side of the ball. So they feel as if, well, what, if I don't do it, is there going to be somebody better than me? But then the amount of work it takes to be the head coach, glad handing, sh- handshaking, handling all the bullshit while also handling a defensive uh, or an offensive strategy through the week is a lot of work. And there's a couple different ways to look at it. You can either say, if this team succeeds, it'll be because of me, or if this team 
team fails, I'll be able to fire the motherfucker that failed, <laughs> yep. and I'll be able to keep my job. So that's just there's two different ways to do it, AJ. You know, there's two different ways to do it. Yeah. What do you? I mean, I I ask coaches that all the time when they go from coordinator to head coach. Like, are you going to continue to call plays? A lot of guys in the college level, they all they all at first like, yeah, I'm definitely calling plays, and they do it for a year or two. Sometimes some guys stick with it and love it and can handle it all, and some guys say, no, I'm better being like the CEO. I need to be. I need to be patrolling the sidelines and talking to defense and offense, not focusing just on one group. It'd be all right if my life didn't just completely suck. <laughs> so I'm going to let somebody else It's a me. massive amount. Yeah. Think how much more work there is for a guy that calls plays compared to a head coach that doesn't call plays. So, yeah. Like 50 hours a week extra probably if you're calling plays. And if you're not doing that, you're kind of I mean, fucking the team not. that you were the head coach of. Yeah. You know, yeah, that was a little exaggerated probably, but legit there is it's probably a lot. a lot extra. I mean – they good on those three, but they got a lot of pressure on who's who. Uh, allegedly, Sean Payton went into the night saying that he would like to announce the starter before next week or whatever. Then after the game, he said, ah, I'll hold off, I'll hold off, I'll hold <laughs> off. And everybody thinks that's maybe because Jameis played so well. Maybe he was thinking of leaning towards Taysom, but then what Jameis did, maybe he backed off his stance. Let's see what happens in his third game. Let's see what happens in practice there. Jameis looked unbelievable, though. Mm-hmm. Jameis looked unbelievable last night. He can see. This some bitch can see for the Finally. first time. And he's got an offense that Sean Payton can dial up. That Callaway kid looks good. It's preseason, so we have to uh, talk about that. And it's against the Jaguars, so we have to talk about that. He was making insane contested catches. You get Taysom Hill in the gadget role, which I'm not sure he's going to be pumped up about. But this is where everybody's thinking right now. Taysom might come out next week, by the way, and throw 10 touchdowns. Yeah. We have no idea what's going to happen, and Sean's going to have to make that decision. But it felt like Jameis, hey, Felt like he's a guy, and he looked comfortable in that offense with Sean Payton calling the shots. He looked awesome. Like I, I was rooting for him. Like I was pumped for Jameis, and obviously Callaway making some of the greatest catches I've seen. Like I didn't, I couldn't hear the announcers. Were they pumped? Like the no. first one, we had two guys draped on him. Interference call. He jumps down and catches it. The only spot you could possibly catch that ball. So the first one, they didn't know it was a catch. Ah. So it was pass interference, and then when he stood up and started yeah. celebrating, yeah. Then it was. Uh, Oh, he caught that. Yeah. Then it was one of those. So I think from the angle they were at, they couldn't see it. But, yeah, they got very excited about that other one. And, you know, I, by the way, I mean, we've got to give credit where credit's due. Mm-hmm. Steve, Greasy, Riddick, and uh, Salt crushed it, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great round from them. Yeah. Legit. Yeah. But it's like golf. So, you know, you got to show up every single week because you never know when the good round is followed uh, by a bad they, round. They haven't won you over, Jesse. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, look, just like the way it's preseason, you can't overreact to the good stuff just yet. It's a long road, boys. They had a long, they had a long year last year. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, and now they got the Mannings competing with them. So, <laughs> boy, it, oh, are you boy. serious? Up no battle. No one would be able to tell. But like, are you serious? I couldn't. I didn't get to hear it. I was reading it. No, they were actually good. What's he talking? You're reading the captions. What do you think they were? The, the things they were saying read good. It seemed like it. Yeah. So you know, it's a little delayed and everything. And I wasn't sure, but yeah, it seemed good. I was, you know, with you. Who knows? We don't know what your real opinion is. What? Well, come, come on. What's your eight and a half hours every day? You guys keep coming on. <laughs> Two minutes, dude. Sweet, sweet. So you're not breaking before him? I mean, I was thinking about it. I didn't do it in the first hour. I assume Ice Cube and us, we're just going to talk 14, 15 minutes probably. We should be able to get out immediately after that. Mm-hmm. But you think we should go to a break? Wait, you don't want to talk anymore about you being wrong? Oh, no. I'm I can completely fine with it. But I know, like, it'll be 150. Oh, sorry, Ice Cube. We got a double out. We got a double break. Now. Yeah, sorry, Ice Cube. <laughs> Well, now it's too late because then he'll be waiting. Yeah, do you really want to? perfect. I love it. What's this all about? Why didn't you say this at 26? Why did you have to say it at 28 and a half? Now if at we go- 25, I assumed, okay, at 20, like four and a half, 25, I assumed you were wrapping it up to go to break, and then you popped up a Jameis tweet. And by the way, who put that tweet out that Jameis, with his stats? Which one? Uh, we popped it up on the show like two minutes ago. I don't know. Put it up. Can we see it? Can we see the Jameis stats there? Oh, that's, oh, oh, so, so, oh, oh, that's our guy. The, so, yeah, so, yeah, the insider. Yeah. I told you. Yeah, so, uh, He's standing at his right? avatar. Oh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I actually did save that photo. I'm setting it as my home screen screensaver. Let's get to a break. Gold. <laughs> we are back in four minutes with Ice Cube. All right? There's no reason to do what you yeah. just did. Well, again. You didn't know what I was doing? Sack of shit, this guy. It's Big hard time. It's hard to just get your face in an avatar. He he almost fills it out standing up. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, That's oh, what we were baby. talking about. Oh, Thank you so much, AJ. Sisley on. Get off, Sisley on. We are a very pro. Go, Sisley on. Show. Go, Sisley on. No, go. <laughs> Back in four minutes with Ice Cube. Can't wait for him to be a very anti Pat McAfee yeah. show guy. We'll see you in four minutes. Jesus.
you have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question and pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was like watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh, guy, man. fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I've ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the, uh, uh, the restaurant, which I'm in right now. And, uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. it's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell <laughs> straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down and you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dolphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey man, did you do this? Like, oh no. Nah. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, you know, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your hey, former you know, teammates. Hey. Yeah, hey, everybody wants you helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them teammates. owned up to it. <laughs> Just a line of questioning. The line of questioning. His name was Willie. Willie, Willie owned up to it. Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He's like, hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you. You okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we We buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs>
live just a few days away from the big three playoffs happening in the bahamas co-founder of the big three movie star nwa rap hall of fame legend ladies and gentlemen big ass brain having ice cube yeah! Yeah! what's going on what's man? happening man hey you have how y'all feeling you have one of the biggest brains in the history of humans you know that right yeah you know, it's, uh, it's shaped like a cube, so that's probably why it works so good. I think that straight out of Compton, right, whenever we were watching that, and in there, obviously, the scene of you writing Friday is in there. I think that was a beautiful flex, first of all, but also I think it was a great moment to be like, this dude is one of the most talented humans to ever exist. I want to let you know we appreciate everything you've done for our society and entertainment, and how the hell did you get into the big three? When did sports say, you know what, I've conquered this, I've conquered, oh, dude, hey, Friday, Next Friday, what? Friday after next, what? Uh, the ride along, what? all the damn uh, jump streets. What? I mean, you just name it, it never ends. How did you decide to get into the sports world, Ice Cube? Being a fan, man, and first of all, I appreciate that, man, you know. Uh, but but being a fan of, of sports all my life, uh, you know, that's the only time I can really fan out, you know, when it comes to sports. And, you know, I, I looked at, guys you know getting out the game to me before before their time and to me it was like yo these dudes you know they got a lot left in the tank to play you know what kind of game would attract people and then i start thinking about three on three it's right there under the surface you know everybody played three on three so uh elevating that to the pro level has been a hell of a journey for for me and my partners uh, but we here, man. We happy. We in the Bahamas playoffs. You know, they ready to fight for that Doc J trophy. Uh, so, you know, it, it's just great to to be here. Do you ever think about having a, a celebrity or like an actor's uh, three-on-three league? I know I see Adam Sandler playing basketball all the time. Gary Vaynerchuk, I see him posting videos. I think there's a bunch, bunch of people that would want to get in, but I don't know if there's a, a market, I guess, to watch. Um, you know, I don't know about a whole celebrity league uh, as far as, um, you know, all celebrities, you know. But I think there's some guys that may have enough game to play in the big three for sure. Um, and so, you know, I would love for them to try out one day and see if they do got enough game to play at this level. So that would be more interesting to me. Um, there's a few celebrity leagues out there. And I'll let them dudes do that, man. You know, doing this is hard enough. Uh, I, I can respect that. Probably a lot more bullshit to deal with all the celebrities wanting to play basketball <laughs> as well. Couldn't even fathom the amount of logistical nightmares that could be. <laughs> Marketing people, agents, PR yeah. people. Oh, Adam Sandler shows up in cargo shorts, though, and fucking balls, <laughs> yeah. from what I've been told. Uh, did you watch the three-on-three -three in the Olympics? And what were your thoughts on that? Who's that dude from Serbia? There was a guy from Serbia who's like a three-on-three -three legend. Did you get a chance to see that? And uh, was there any thoughts of, like, let's try to recruit some of them into our league? Well, yeah, that guy is playing in our league. Uh, Desan Bullet. he's in our <laughs> okay. league. Okay! Uh, you know, he, he won the bronze medal uh, with the Serbian team and then flew in and started playing in our league in week four. Uh, his team didn't make it to the, to the playoffs, though, but uh, oh. he came and he lit it up. Um, and I did watch, you know, what they're doing. Uh, I think, you know, it's great for the Olympics. Uh, I think what's the difference is, you know, they're doing, you know, amateur three-on-three, -three, and we're doing the professional version. So uh, I think we have the best three-on-three -three athletes in the world. So... Uh, I believe the U.S. should have used some big three athletes and maybe they would have qualified for, you know, for playing in the game. So we thought maybe know. we thought maybe you Roger Goodell that thing and said, nah, none of our players can go. <laughs> yeah. It's great to hear that that was not the case. Why did we not have a team out there? I have no idea. You know, we, we asked uh, the uh, Olympic, uh, you know, USA basketball if they wanted to to, you know, have any of our athletes. Um, they were trying to send them through that point system. And I'm like, dude, we got we got dudes that's won championships in the NBA. Y'all don't y'all don't make the NBA players do that stuff on for five on five. So why 
why do uh you know guys that are like Joe Johnson, why would he have to go through some damn point system? So um they basically was like, Thank you, but no thank you and I was like, All right, you know, your loss. And yeah. They damn sure did lose, you know, they didn't <laughs> qualify to to take a team over there. It's pathetic. Um, it was pathetic. It was bad. We're talking to Ice Cube, co-founder of the Big Three, but also NWA and producer of all these movies. Everything you're in, do you write at this point, or are you hired out as an actor as well, or, or are you mostly the brain behind a lot of this stuff? No, I, you know, I just act sometimes. You know, sometimes I'm just hired as an actor, and that's cool. It's actually a lot easier to just go in and act and, you know, go home. You know, producing, you 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 worried about all kind of shit that's going on. You know what I mean? You like they talking about all kind of issues on the set, you dealing with, you know, people don't like each other in the makeup trailers. It's just all <laughs> kind of petty stuff that you gotta deal with, you know what I'm saying? But but as an actor, you just walk on, do your thing and be like, man, deuces. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See y'all tomorrow. And, uh, you know, it's much easier for show. Anything in the works that we should keep our eye out for? And I know the boys have some questions, so we appreciate your time. But do you have anything cooking? Any new? Are you writing anything right now? Creating anything right now? Always writing, always creating. You know, right now I got Big Three on my mind. Um, we're supposed to do a movie later this year, me and Jack Black, called Oh Hell No. Oh, um, it's going to be good. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be funny as hell. And so... <laughs> And so, uh, you know, I, I'm doing this other movie, War, War of the Worlds. We're doing this uh, kind of a new technology, a way to do that movie. So that's that's dope, doing that for Universal. Um, always right, but right now I just got, you know, I got big three on my brain for the next few weeks till we, uh, till we you know, pop some champagne, man, and we crown a champion. Yeah, it's not easy to run a league, especially whenever it's playoff and championship time. Go ahead, Ty. Ice Cube, uh, Pat mentioned the producing. The Raiders doc you did for the uh, 30 for 30 was one of my favorite ones. With that being said, do you still fuck with the Raiders, or was it a tough pill to swallow when they moved to Vegas? No, you know, I'm the president of the Raider Nation. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I'm down uh, to the wheels fall off. They was already in Oakland, so, you know, I was hoping they would come to L.A. They gave us the bullshit Chargers, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we slanging them for cheap. Them in the, we're throwing the Clippers, too. You know what I'm saying? We're throwing the Clippers for cheap. Y'all want them. Uh, but but I'm, I'm still down with the Raiders. You know, I ain't, I'm definitely not rolling with the Chargers. How much uh, do you watch a lot of NFL? Do you watch a lot of the Raiders games, or are you kind of busy and everything else that's going on in the world? Are you dialed in, yeah? I'm busy. No, I'm not dialed in. I'm, I'm pretty busy, but I, I'm still watching. But it's preseason, you know what I mean? Like it's preseason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm waiting for 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 game one, week one, when the real bullets start to fly. Hey, speaking of real bullets, the Raiders are staring down an IRS fucking investigation yeah. right now. I don't know if that's anything. Oh, any is that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's preseason. What's the Raiders, what you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Can't be too clean. <laughs> Uh, everybody yeah, go, go ahead. Be too clean. Yeah. So, well, I think that's what they're saying. I think <laughs> I think everybody a part of it. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Ice Cube. When you see uh, rappers beefing these days, like Drake and Kanye West and those guys, does it just kind of make you laugh, or is it just so ridiculous you don't even pay attention to it? I mean, it's part of the game. You know, it's to me, it's it's like fighters. You know, what I mean, you want them to to talk a little shit before they get in the ring. Um, so. It's all part of the game. As long as it don't get violent, I'm with it. You know, once it get violent, then that's street stuff. That ain't that ain't got nothing to do with music. So, um, as long as I keep it, you know what I mean, keep it within the lines, as they say, I'm all with it, man. All fair, all's fair in love and record sales. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like you you gotta you gotta let people do their thing. You know, you definitely gotta let Kanye be Kanye, man. People trying to bottle that man up let that man do him man it's it's, it's uh you know it's art he's, he's he's living art you know what i'm saying so cube I you don't ever, mind. can i call you cube yeah cube you ever think about in the middle of a fucking concert just getting some uh some some wires on you and lifting you up in the middle of the stadium like kanye did down there <laughs> when he was living in the mercedes-benz stadium he was what, 200 feet in the sky yeah. 
That motherfucker is a maniac. Yeah. That was wild. You know, he definitely got more uh, nerve than me. You know, I'm definitely not letting nobody strap me up and <laughs> taking me that high in no building. So, you know, I keep my hip hop on the ground. You know, I'm, I'm OG with it. You know what I'm saying? We, we stay on the stage. I don't stage dive. You know what I mean? You know, I don't rap over my lyrics. You know what I mean? I give you straight up, you know, OG hip hop. That's awesome. Go ahead, AJ. Hey, so I, I have to ask you about one of the, my favorite movies of all time. Came out in 1997, Anaconda. You had one of the cleanest <laughs> yes. knockouts of the dude off the boat. I don't know if it was Angelina Jolie's dad or whoever you knocked John out. John Voight, yeah. With his elbow slash forearm. And it, ever since then, my brothers and a group of everyone in Ohio that I know, we, our dream is to ice cube somebody either like <laughs> in a real fight or we, we would ice cube people into the pool. Like that's all we ever did. So I just had to let you know. And how many times did you get to film that? Oh uh, man, we shot that in uh, Manaus, Brazil. You know, when I heard I heard we was going to Brazil, I got all excited. But then I realized Manaus is not Rio. You know what I mean? <laughs> Manaus is in the middle of the jungle. You know, so um, we shot it a few times. Uh, you know, John Voight. You know, he an OG actor. You know what I mean? From the old school, so. You know, he ain't going to let you get him too much. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> one take of this, and uh, then we off to the next. So uh, it was fun to work on that, man. You know, I was happy to get out of there, though, because, you know, working on the real uh, Amazon wasn't no joke. Yeah. No joke at all. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's a place people go, you know, I want to spend six months working there. I don't <laughs> think that is something a lot of people say. Uh, how nice was it to revisit while you wrote uh, Straight Outta Compton and your son, how nice was it to revisit that moment where you walked into old Stooge's office with a baseball bat and just fucked everything up? Was that, how nice was that moment in real life, in actual time? That had to feel pretty good. They got rage rooms all over the country where people go do this. You actually got to do it to the person and then reliving it again. Was there any part where you're like, oh, no, I, I think I actually went over there as well and I fucked <laughs> <laughs> Was there any of that? How was that whole uh, uh, process? It, it was it was uh, doing it. I was pissed off, and you know we almost went to jail, so it wasn't as fun as the movie. You know, the walk off in the movie was in slow motion and shit. You know what I mean? The walk off in real life was like, all right, let's roll. You know what I mean? We did what we had to do. Let's get the hell out of here. LAPD on their way. <laughs> so, uh, you know, reliving it. It, it's, it's bittersweet. You know, of course, we want to be accurate as, as we can in a two-hour movie. Um, but, you know, Brian Turner is a nice guy. You know what I mean? He's a cool dude. You know, I hate that he had to relive that. You know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we, we cool now. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, we wanted to kind of show you, you know, the, all the pressures and everything that was going on at the time on everybody you know what it, it wasn't a cakewalk for nobody during that time even though we was having the time of our life i think it reintroduced how important nwa was to music and society to a whole generation of people that couldn't have experienced it i i think that was the big takeaway and did you expect it to be as positive the reviews of straight out of compton whenever you created it, or did you think maybe like okay people are going to hate this some people are going to love this because i think mostly Everybody was like, hey, that's a great fucking movie. Probably, aside from the guy, I guess, that had his uh, desk blown up. <laughs> yeah. He probably hated it and some other people that maybe were assholes. They didn't like it. But did you expect the reaction to be as positive as it was? Because it was fantastic. I, the whitest of white people loved it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, I mean, like, everybody really enjoyed the hell out of that thing. Yeah, I mean, we expected to, you know, definitely do the, do the movie right, um, get the right feeling, the right vibe, the right tone. Uh Having F. Gary Gray as a director was important. You know, he knows Los Angeles. He lived through the time. He, uh, you know, was right there with the group in, in a lot of instances. So, you know, we had the right ingredients. You know, Dr. Dre being a producer, me being a producer. Um, we knew we was going to do a movie that wasn't just about rap. You know, the movie was going to be about uh, friendship. It was going to be about uh break up the makeup it was gonna be about rags to riches it was gonna be about you know david versus goliath um 
So we knew we had all those ingredients that everybody can relate to, you know, not just, you know, rappers, but anybody can relate to that kind of story. So you got that story wrapped in in the backdrop of the crazy shit we was going through with N.W.A. and Death Row and, you know, uh, you know, everything in between. Then, you know, we knew we had a great movie. Um it was just all about making sure that we, you know, edited it right and marketed it right. And thank God Universal um, did, did their thing and, and knocked it out the park. Yeah, it was awesome. And thank God for you putting it together and the whole thing. And I couldn't even imagine what those hotels after parties were like. Oh. I mean, I guess I got a chance to, gl- yeah. to get a little glimpse of it. There was probably some incredibly uncomfortable <laughs> moments uh, there through that entire thing. And fantastic, obviously. Go ahead, Diggs. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cube, when I'd work out, which is rare, uh, Go to Church is one of my go-to songs of yours to listen to. And you work, obviously, with Snoop on that. Um, is there an artist, musically or in the acting world, that you have been with that you enjoy working with the most? Yeah. Um, and on that record, you know, Little Little John produced that music. He produced the beat. He produced the song. So when you got me, Little John, and Snoop together... You can't miss. <laughs> um, you know, I love working with, you know, great producers, people that kind of are at the top of their game. You know, I had a chance, of course, to work with the great Dr. Dre. You know, it's always, you know, a, a special time to be able to work with him because, you know, you know you're working with, you know, one of the best to ever do it. Um, love working with the Bomb Squad back in the day. You know, learned a lot from them. Uh, they produced all the Public Enemy records. So to be in there with, you know, Chuck D and, and, and his team um, and, and produce my first album, you know, was special. You know, these are moments I can't I can't forget. Uh, people like DJ Pooh, who we wrote Friday together. Uh, so me and him been doing movies, music, videos, you know everything together for a long time so these are some of my favorite people to work with how about mount westmore when i saw mount westmore what was that fight what fight was yeah, that it was one of the trailer ones I there was a, tra- yeah, that was a trailer fight hey yeah i lost my fucking mind whenever you guys and i was like okay is there an album coming do we have a tour coming what are we doing with mount westmore yeah you know we uh we definitely got it coming we was getting our ducks in a row you know what i mean it's it's easier in a lot of ways to say and, and to get four guys in the studio, but we just got to make sure we got everything worked out behind the scenes yes, um, before we, you know, just take off because it is a super group. We do got, we got about 48, 50 tracks what? already done. Damn. Yeah, yeah. And so we got a few albums and we're going to roll them out with, with tours and all that kind of stuff. So this fall, here we come. Oh, you guys are going to be selling out fucking home. stadiums. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that. how many tracks? 48. <whistles> Jeez. How does that even, how long does that take? Do you guys just have, like, the guys like you and Snoop and obviously everybody, uh, do you guys just have just never-ending hooks in your mind that, like, all right, I got to get into a booth right now. I I got 30 to 50 fucking <laughs> smashes. Right? Like, how does that even happen? Man, you know, just having this many creative people down in and, and focus on one project. You know, everybody was giving us beats. Um, we were hyped up because we working together. Um, it's actually less work because, you know, you just really got to come up with your verse, your hook, you know. So everybody, instead of doing three verses, we all doing one verse, coming up with hooks, double hooks, triple hooks. You know, we just... Hey, we, just hey, so much creativity. Cube, listen, this is going to come from a dumb white in the middle of Indiana. I want to let you know, not enough people make bangers anymore. We need bangers, Cube. We need yes. fucking bangers. I need to go into a gym and turn something on and make me want to, okay, I want to fucking kill everybody. Yeah. Like, we don't make that anymore. Like, I think that is a, yeah. Diggs talked about that is like when he works out, for me, when I get in the gym, I need, okay, I need a banger. Right now, everybody's, and I appreciate and I respect that our society's getting to this point. Everybody's in love, all right? Okay. I need some, yeah. you know what I mean? I need some, bang- we got 48 to 50 bangers coming? We got a lot of bangers on there. 
I mean, we got we got bangers, we got old school, oh, you know what I mean, yes. like music that we all grew up on and 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 we got, you know, that new shit. You know what I'm saying? We we got we got something for everybody. <laughs> Hey, that's why you're a legend, dude. We appreciate you so much for your time. Good luck with the big three playoffs. I think personally, hey, Tri-State's going to be a fucking problem. Yep. Yeah, look out. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they're a problem, Cube. They're a big, big, big time problem. What, um, when they win, they win the Dr. J trophy? Yeah. Is that the you same that? year after year? Is it the same trophy or is it a new one? What's well, a new one every year? You know, uh, the, the, the captain and the team get to take that one and pass it around, do what the hell they want to do with it, <laughs> like the Stanley Cup. But but we get a new one every year because uh, we want, you know, guys to to want their own, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and to keep it. And, and you know, uh, we're thankful that Dr. Dre, I mean, I said Dr. Dre, Dr. J. Hey, Dr. Dre's uh, supporting as well, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Dr. Dre, yeah, big yeah, you know, uh, Let us name the championship tro trophy after him. You know what I'm saying? He's a legend in the game. We we grateful that he he's a coach in our league, uh, that he believed in the big three uh, more than ESPN. You know they don't they don't fuck with us for some reason. But, yeah, they don't really fuck but, with uh, me either, Cuban. I mean, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. What's wrong with them dudes, man? man I don't so, know. What is the what's deal? What's wrong with them dudes? Man? I feel like but, we got some good stuff. You know, I feel like we got some good stuff. What's the deal? I don't know, man. Maybe they just haters slow and, and, and fucking out of touch but but anyway <laughs> thank, thank you for doc uh dr j um you know hopefully he win it this year you know the trophy named after him you know he probably need to win one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen rap icon movie icon big three founder one of our biggest brains that humans have ever seen ladies and gentlemen ice cube thank you man yeah. 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 See Appreciate y'all. Hey, you too, man. I can't wait to hear the bangers. Uh, yeah, oh. me too. 48? Holy AJ, shit. we need fucking bangers back. Everybody's lot. I, I agree, man. I, I think you were spot on what you said. Well, I know. Are you a big rap guy? I don't... I mean... Uh, no. Uh, no, but I mean, I... Not you know I'm not I'm not gonna claim I'm gigantic but I like the hits man yeah definitely I mean, listen to the hits and in the weight room like there is mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. is just like it is hard for me to do anything if there is not a banger on in the background like I need I'm a I'm a energy driven person I think everybody knows that and music is a great way you know for me to get going in the morning anytime I wake up and or work out or do anything basically drive like yeah, I, I yeah. need to, let's go and everybody and this is not your fault Foxy but yeah. Give us Yo, another. what are you butting? You, you're younger than him. I was, no, I was you. saying, <laughs> but it's Mitt's fault. I wasn't gonna say, but it's Fox's fault. I was saying, but it's Mitt's fault. Give and us I, another no Vaseline cube. Well, not not just no Vaseline. Okay, <laughs> that song bad. Okay, all right, but what I'm it, it, literally <laughs> it does. Yeah, but what I'm like, they don't make things don't go no, anymore. No, they don't. I agree. They don't go anywhere mm -hmm. because everybody's like so nice and vibey and everything. Like I get it. I appreciate it. I respect the art. You do what you got to do. And every generation has said, well, in my day, music did a thing. And I feel like that right now. But you guys are lacking bangers. Like we, we need some we need some bangers. We need some terrible things being said into a microphone mm -hmm. with some incredibly hard beats behind it. Because some of us want to go do some destruction to our bodies and other things. And it's just... I'm happy that Mount Westmore's coming in. Yeah. Say, sounds like we don't have to wait that much longer. Big shout out to Mount Westmore, dude. Literally, as soon as they showed up, I think I sent 10 tweets out. Like, oh, wait a minute. Texas, well, what the fuck is Mount Westmore? I, <laughs> yeah. Have I missed something? I thought I missed something. I was like, has this been happening for a long time? 50 songs? Here That's we go. Lot. It's a double disc. It's quadruple. Three, yeah. yeah. yeah it's quadruple. It's fucking four albums. You probably have to. <laughs> oh, yeah. With pictures on the inside. Yeah, uh -huh. need a six, six disc changer. Listen to the whole thing. <laughs> <That a boy. laughs> All right, we're back in four minutes. AJ, thank you uh, for crushing it with Ice Cube, dude. He's awesome. Like, hey, I'm a big fan. Been a big fan ever since Anaconda. Even before that, I guess. So, what was this punch? I don't think I've ever seen. Oh. It was it. Uh, it was like an yeah. It was like forearm a forearm shiver. elbow. It was beautiful. It's a thing of beauty for real. We 100. percent Oh, do you, do you ice cube him? Nah, I didn't get him, but I tried. You know, Roman Reigns throws <laughs> one. Of oh yeah, big time. Russo dropped yeah. one of those the other night too. Yeah, the bloodlines oh, were watching yeah. Anaconda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Snakes out there this big. 
I've never seen it. As they said, though. Yeah. yeah, it holds up. Too. It's a great film. It's a how, about, how about him being in the middle of fucking Amazon to film that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just him and John Boy. Where are we going? Brazil? Cool. I'll go to Rio. It'll be a blast. <laughs> yeah. Hey, J Lo. J Lo Enterprise. Yeah. You will land in Rio. Yeah, you actually will. And then you guys will hop on a couple buses and you will drive straight into nowhere. About 15 <laughs> hours. It's Anaconda. We got to find them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's You're go out there. They're fucking out there. All right. We're back on the other side of this two minute break here. AJ, what do we got in hour three? Anything cool? Oh, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff. Since we were engrossed with Cube, I think a lot of stuff was, was you know, happening in the football world. Okay. We'll break that news in two minutes. We'll see you then. What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, I never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. And, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. You don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? <laughs> so when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you, when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a sacrifice I was willing to make. <laughs> I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did and, you start uh, you self-cheersing? Know, when did you start self-cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting that, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember. And it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. I say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. Oh, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. McAfee show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. Hour three on this Tuesday, Jesus, August 24th, 2021, years after zero. We'll begin immediately following this incredible beat drop from Twine. There it is. Here we go. Uh, Hammer Down Boys are still in studio. Toxic Table, AJ Hawk. Just got done with a conversation with Ice Cube. Wow. Pretty cool. Incredible. Why was Ice Cube on this show? I don't know. Good question. Because we love cool. the big three. We do. No, I'm not saying, like, why did we have Ice Cube on the show? What I'm saying is, why did Ice Cube agree Agreed. to come on the show? Why, why did he call? That is awesome. <laughs> and it, I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's a pretty cool thing to have Ice Cube on. There ain't no way he knew our show existed. I wonder what his thoughts are now afterwards. What's going through Ice Cube's head right now, you think, AJ? Well, I would imagine he's doing other interviews today. To, he's pubbing the championships, right, for Big Three? Well, it's playoffs, you know, and Trilogy is taking on Tri-State, and then you mm. got the big three-headed monsters taking on the triplets. And whenever you're talking about those four teams, you're talking about electrifying action. That's happening this weekend in the Bahamas. Make sure you are glued to Fox, I believe. is uh, We got it in there. ESPN don't fuck with either of them. Nah. <laughs> Whatever team Reggie Evans is on will win. Bingo. Uh, well, Dr. J, you know, is coaching that Tri-State squad, and they are very good, and the uh, trophy's named after him. Okay, yeah, Jump, sure. I hate to break sure. to you, but big three, I think Tri-State's got it on lockdown this year. Joe Johnson's hot as well. He, saying, he's the best player in the Joe league. Johnson's How about Ice Cube telling the U.S. Uh, Olympics basketball? You can use some more, guys. Uh, they got, what's the point system he was talking about? What does that mean? 
No idea. I wonder, is that like how like wrestlers get in and stuff like that? They have to score like a certain amount of points through trials and, and whatnot in order to actually be on the Olympic team? That sounds a lot better than anything I was thinking. I mean, ISO Joe wants to play you for the Olympics. Let him play. I thought points was like you had to get agreed, by the way. We didn't even have a team in the Olympics. They didn't qualify. But I was thinking like points like, I don't know, like as a human. Like they give like him buckets. like five shots and it's like how many – how many points you score with these five <laughs> shots is whether or not you're going to make the team. Yeah, like it. take a test and then. Right. Like that oh. whole, I didn't know what. Honestly, as soon as he said, uh, NBA players ain't got to do no damn points or whatever, I was starting to think to myself, okay, what would the NBA players not have to do that maybe everybody else would have to do? And I started thinking, I'm like, why would why would we not just take our professional big threeers and send them into the Olympics whenever we're competing against other countries? Why aren't we doing this? What are we doing? Why are the Olympics becoming the way they are, AJ? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know there's. This had to be the first year of three on three basketball in the Olympics. It right? was, it yeah, was, it was. Yeah. We, we should have won the gold. Did the weird scoring? Is that what he's talking about? Didn't you guys told me like someone was up nine at, at overtime or something weird? Uh, that was for the uh, throwback tournament. Yeah, the TBT, the yeah. basketball tournament, and oh. it's called the. Um, They do Kobe? It? No. 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 Like they, well, they do it for the All Star game, Doctor, too. Uh, like the Lewandowski rule or something? No, no I was a soccer player. I mean, does this matter? Yeah. Well, you brought it up. You fucking Wait, Lewandowski, you say, are you talking Trump's old guy? Ty, is that who you're talking about? What? Excuse Dude, me, I had a neighbor named Mike Lewandowski. Uh, He's not, there's a lot of Lewandowski. Yeah. Elam? Elam is ending there, rules? The Elam, Elam the point ending Elam rules, rules yeah. yeah. So at the final timeout <laughs> below the four minute warning, yep. mm, you take the highest scoring, the higher scoring team. Add nine points to it. That is now the ending number. Both teams are trying to eight points. Okay. Now you're trying to chase it. The reason why we think it's nine because it was I think it was like 61, mm -hmm. and the eight points above was 69, yes. which is what the chase was for the basketball tournament. They used it for the NBA All Star game. That's called the Elam game ending rule. Thank you for learning something today, Jay Hawk. Uh, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. Thank you for teaching me. And he did it. He did it open up and say hey, tryouts are open. Gary V. Sandler, they should go give it a shot. I maybe. do like that you put Gary V. in there because we have seen <laughs> one video of him playing basketball out there and uh, he swatted the hell out of the guy while punching him in the face yeah, yeah. if he goes into the three on three league Gary V's not walking out with you know all his limbs attached they no did way. feel like what Gary V did on the basketball court would have caused a fight if he was not Gary V but I like that he's leaving out on the floor that's if why he's going on the Jets if he does that again at any local run no matter when, he will get his teeth knocked out. Get ready. <laughs> I don't know how it didn't happen there. I was starting to think maybe it was active. The guy wanted to. Probably. And then he turned around and he was like, oh, fuck. fuck if I knock v. out Gary V, he's going to, you know, tweet, hey, go fuck yourself or something like that. So he's not going to do it. <laughs> What's this all about? Yeah. I, I did not know this was going to happen. That sounds like a lot of a lot of hate towards Gary V. Right there. I love oh, Gary V. Yeah, huh? That's how he talks. Gary V is, uh, listen, if he's garage sailing, I ain't missing a second of it. I want to know, hey, can you find a, a Mike Maddox 1986 Tops baseball trading card yes. in there for twenty five cents, and then resell it for four fifty. I need to know that. <laughs> Taking a few too many days Wait, off for me. Let's get to uh, he doesn't garage take sailing. Do, does he film himself going to garage? Oh, sailing? AJ, oh, AJ. AJ. Come, come on, on. AJ. 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 son of a it's bitch. basic God. business. He's flipping business. He's teaching people that although you might not come from money, you might not have a degree, you might be young. There are ways to flip and make money by going to. <laughs> Garage sales around New Jersey yeah. all weekend. Yeah, yes. he's telling these poor people to, hey, spend every waking second of your free time finding garage sales around you, and maybe you'll find something you could resell for a big profit. Maybe. Just real quick, though. Once again, you do like Gary I love v. Gary V. It didn't sound like no, Gary even in your last sentence right No, no, no. There. I legit will. If he's going garage sailing, I am locked in until he is done garage sailing. Let's go to the phones on the five iron. I love his shoes too. I do too. I got a pair. Yeah, I know. His Case drawings. Was, I mean, what, is, his what drawings. is it? Dirt and air? Clouds. clouds. Come on. Clouds. Clouds? I knew it was something like that. <laughs> AJ, what's I love it. I love it. What? I love Gary V. Gary V. is going to put a. You say dirt and air? air? That's what it is. Well, it's dirt and clots. Okay, you got to hit the dirt to end up in the clots. Yeah. Ah, you got to work yeah. if you want to celebrate up there. Like is that, that a reference to your dead family members that you talked oh. about? No, no, no. That's a completely AJ. different reference. He's talking about. I will not family. stand for it. This will not be. <laughs> this is what he These said. Not today. man. These are all compliments. You know that. AJ, all, you started big this fans. one. You guys aren't. You guys aren't true fans like us. Thank you. Me and AJ That's are the right. only true fans. Whoa. No, no. He said us, like us. I just told you I've consumed more than 450 <laughs> hours of Gary V garage sailing content in the last year and a half. <laughs> What's that say? <laughs> 
go. He should sign you up. I think you'd be good at it. I love garage sale. Hey, listen, if I fire your ass for offending fucking Gary V on a Tuesday, guess what you can do? I'll be fucking holding the camera at the next garage sale he goes to. <laughs> Where are we going, Gary? Where are we going? Yeah, but you have to pay $200,000 to work for it. No, 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 no. Listen. All right. Okay. It's getting a little out of control. Let's get to the five-hour energy phone lines. What I was thinking is maybe you go flip at some garage sales as opposed to film other people at garage sales. Because oh, wow. yeah, that's what Gary V's trying to do is look out You'd for You'd be people. the next Gary V. Boom. Bang. How about that? <laughs> what are those? Hatchimals? Those What's toys funny, are sweet. AJ? My kids actually love those things. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get. Uh, he looks like you guys are terrible. Hey, what? I do not appreciate this. He looks like an absolute weapon in that photo. What do you mean? Well, I agree, and I thank you. But the way oh, yeah. AJ laughed was just very rude. I hope Gary V makes a post about all you. I'm not laughing at you guys. I'm not laughing at Gary V. I'm, I'm arguably his biggest fan. Yeah. So. <laughs> you were nowhere near Yes, I am arguably Gary V's biggest fan. I love him. And you know what? If he ends you're... up buying the Jets, oh, I might be a Jets fan. If you're his Whoa. biggest fan, Gary V's got problems. Really? I'm going to let you know that. Because we all listen to what you just did for the last 10 minutes of Gary V. What are you talking about? The guy's a visionary. Doesn't sound like a fan. He is. That's what I'm saying. That's why he doesn't... I know. Okay, all right. Let's get to the fence. Mm-hmm. He's going to buy the Jets. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. Can't wait to see him at the owners' meeting. Might be tough to buy the Jets, owners. though. Zach Wilson might be a guy. Whole entire team might be worth a lot of money. Okay, let's talk about Zach Wilson because we haven't really talked about him yet on this show because it is preseason and it's kind of, you know, our show kind of stinks anyways. But <laughs> Zach Wilson, hey, he's fucking good, dude. I thought Now, it's preseason, okay, so this is just preseason. Don't want to overreact too much. Because it is preseason. We have said this a lot throughout the last couple weeks as preseason has happened. Hey, it's just preseason. Zach Wilson, that baby-faced Mormon son of a bitch out there, I thought he was potentially going to get, you know, scared in the big lights. I thought maybe in the men's league he was going to not be able to be as proficient as a thrower that he displayed at his workout, his combine, and the game, everything. I was completely wrong. He's a guy. He yeah. flies around. He can make every single throw. Those off-angle throws that he was doing at his workout that everybody was like, oh, way to go, Zach Wilson. Or some people were losing their mind for. He's doing that shit in the game. They got a guy out there in New York. Will they be able to protect him? Will they be able to win? The organization has stunk forever. Will they be able to maybe make it worth it? But Zach Wilson, whenever I watch, I haven't watched a full game yet. So, like, an entire series of him. I've only saw the highlights. He's really, really, really impressive to me. I, I was very shocked and surprised, actually, how good he has looked thus far. All rookie quarterbacks are going to have a learning curve. Uh, we see it with Trevor Lawrence, especially if the offensive line isn't great. Young guys, there's going to be a learning curve. Feels like he's a playmaker, though. Very comfortable, very confident. I'm a big Zach Wilson guy all of a sudden. I mean, I, he's very impressive. We talked about the, his moxie. Remember, like, leading into the draft, we were talking about how he carries himself and everything about him. I you got to have that. Like you got to have that confidence to be a franchise quarterback in the NFL, and he has the physical tools. You can see, but also, didn't uh, old Bob Sala bring over Lafleur's brother to be the OC there in New York? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, by the way, because there's a lot of similarities. A lot of people have said this. Even uh, Zach Wilson has said that uh, Aaron Rodgers is the guy I look up to. Very similar. Now, Aaron Rodgers has been able to do it for what 18 years at the highest level. He's an MVP, so maybe Zach Wilson will be able to do that. But he does seem to fall into that bucket of Mahomes, Aaron style quarterback. Now that is the two i mean those are two mount rushmore quarterbacks yeah. that, that is gonna be very difficult to uh to achieve he might be on his way to do so but here early it looks like that's the style of player he is he can extend plays it mm-hmm. looks like it looks like he can dissect defenses it looks like he's going to a second third read i mean it looks like they got a guy out there and bringing in lafleur's brother who's also from what shanahan right is that shanahan yeah they're from the shanahan thing it seems like that's the right move and that goes back to orlovsky's point that <laughs> There are offenses in the NFL that are very efficient by themselves, let alone if the players make the moves with the way rules are. And that's what he was talking about with Bevel. Like, hey, this offense is very much player-oriented. The scheme isn't really opening much up for him. Well, it's only a second preseason game. It's tough to ju- judge all that stuff. But Zach Wilson has been awesome to watch. Well, and I think and maybe this is just for me. I think because the expectations after the draft and the whole thing with you know everybody lining up and he just looked kind of weird almost, kind of awkward, him coming out and being able to make those throws that you're talking about and clearly being a leader and everything you hear from camp is that he's texting everybody on the team, you know, what's going on, trying to figure out the playbook and everything. It seems as though the AFC East has four pretty young quarterbacks for the next, you know, 
10 years. What organization will win? What organization yeah. will be able to win? I think Josh Allen has already proved that he would win. Uh, the Patriots obviously have proved that they can win up there. Will it be Mac Jones yeah. that can do it and transition in there? Unless Cam Newton comes back after this five-day sentence. Hiatus. Yeah. Hey, my dog's serving five days. <laughs> I hope he's all right, man. Hope he comes back and better. Maybe he'll be the guy. But whenever you talk about the organization has to also, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And maybe Bob is able to turn that around with Joe Douglas and maybe the Jets are on their right way. But when you've got a quarterback that is electrifying, that helps out, I think, everybody. The fan base, the media, the team, the teammates, the coaches. And it feels like Zach Wilson's guy. Three overall pick was the big conversation. Mm -hmm. One was known. Three was the big conversation. Zach is kind of just... You know, kind of skated by without much publicity. Somehow, he he was just, uh, watching his teammates chug beers at Islanders games. He was throwing up gang signs draft night. His mom was on social <laughs> yeah. media. But aside from that, there was zero conversation about him as a football player. Yeah. Now we're getting a chance to watch. He's fucking good, dude. Yeah, I don't, I know. I don't know if it's just because I didn't really get to watch him much at BYU, and you just you know you fall back on like oh they don't play anybody. But he looks just like so smooth and fluid in the pocket, and like I feel like a, a lot of these or some of these young guys like. Like you can tell they get happy feet really quick. Like he was, he was staying. I mean, I watched him in the. He looks in the control. Ty. He does. Anything, he looks very in control. Like, yeah, hey, I got this. This is not my first time out here. And like Pat, Pat mentioned, yes. like, and it, it's not. He's not locking in on one guy. Like he's going through his progressions. He's you know looking off safeties with his eyes. Like he's been very very impressive. And if him and Aaron had that practice together, which they did, and they're running the same offense basically, I, there was if Zach Wilson was smart, which which let's assume he is, he'd be asking Aaron like, hey. And this, uh, what do you do? And would Aaron help him, you think? Absolutely, yeah. I, they, they showed like pictures of them talking during practice. I know Aaron even talked about to the media. He's a fan of his game, and he, he talked to him before the season, I believe, too. So I, I bet you Aaron gave him some, some very good advice. Like Any questions that Zach Wilson would have, I promise you Aaron will probably give you super long, in-depth answers and tell him why he made this throw, why he does this and does that. Just for future reference, by the way, if you get a chance to chat with somebody who maybe you could <laughs> learn from, don't waste it. Like, actually fucking do it. And I think that is, um, that's like a life lesson I wish that... And I actually bug him. Don't think you're bugging him. I think a lot of people, in the old uh, Steve Jobs thing, like or Bill Gates, they say, like, people, when they got so big, people would stop asking him things and they want people to ask him, like, hey, what, how do you do this? Why did people get, like, scared? And all you gotta do is ask. I know yeah. Bill Gates has a whole... Classic story going back to when he was young. When you get a chance, though, to talk to somebody, like Zach did at training camp, he knew that was going to happen. I hope Zach came with like, all right, yeah. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to read off a list of questions, but if I can get some of these answers, that would be good. And I think that is something I wish I knew earlier in life because I get a chance to chat with all these like incredibly successful people because I was riding coattails of other incredibly successful people. And I just... You know, it was the dancing clown there and like, yeah, yeah, good to see you. All right, wouldn't even take a photo. And then I'd leave and I'd tell him, oh, I just met fucking insert name of human here. Oh, how'd the conversation go? Uh, I don't remember. I think I chugged a beer. <laughs> and oh. then I think, uh, I, think <laughs> yeah. I think we high five. Did you get a photo? <laughs> no, I didn't want to bug him or anything like that. It's like, I wish I would have. And I wish I would have taken that opportunity to ask an actual question to maybe shape my life a little bit as opposed to anything else. Aaron getting a chance to chat with Zach and Zach appears to have a similar playing style in the same offense. I, that could be invaluable type lesson there. You know what I mean? Usually we talk about how like having a rookie quarterback that also has a veteran in the quarterback room kind of helps you. But do you think because like the whole regime is new and Zach Wilson can just kind of go in and be himself and basically kind of shape the culture around who he is kind of benefits him more so than having a veteran? Um, I think so. But the him getting dropped in the fire, yeah. I think is gonna 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 help him out a lot. Mm -hmm. he, and he's gonna get I mean, he's going to get dropped in the fire. Oh, yeah. Big yeah. time. In yep. New York, doing the shadows in New York City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tough schedule. Tough schedule. Yeah. Bill Belichick's pissed. He just spent a lot of money up there. He gets him week two. Oh. <laughs> Bob sala has got his work cut out for him, but let's see if Zach Wilson will be able to do it. That's the first time we got a chance to chat about Zach, and I feel bad about doing that, but every other show talks about every New York team and L.A. team at ad nauseum. So mm, right. we try to stick away from that, but Danny Dimes here to watch himself. There seems to be a... A, uh, a baby faced killer yeah. coming up yeah. in the Jets organization trying to win over that same fan base over there. AJ, you want to get to the uh, Five Hour Energy phone lines or no? Yeah, let's do it, man. Who's on there? Well, I, okay, before we get to that, I just saw something on this sheet that we have not talked about and I would like to talk about because I got attacked. Mm -hmm. I don't like being attacked. What's up? There was a stat presented <laughs> on ESPN television this morning that made me go, what? 
What? what? what? Literally looked at the screen. What? What? It left the screen, grabbed remote, rewound, paused. What? Yeah. What? what? The percentage of completions over expectations of the 2021 first round quarterbacks this preseason. Trevor Lawrence, 4.8%. Zach Wilson, minus 0.7%. Justin Fields, minus 0.9%. Mac Jones, minus 1.9%. Trey Lance, minus 18.2%. Yikes. What? These dudes are throwing negative completion percentages somehow. <laughs> I, I, so I, this is two preseason games, so I obviously go, what? what? And then everybody that is in the sports world comments, underneath and goes what uh, everybody says what is this what how is this even a stat it, this is two preseason games in, in, in by the way limited reps for all of these quarterbacks here this is a stat that's happening all of a sudden you should have seen the analytics people this oh cpoe welcome to the nfl sports idiots is what i was being told by these analytical people and i'm like yo hold on analytic nerds okay i appreciate what you guys do but you and i both know that you can paint numbers to paint any picture that you potentially want any narrative or truth that you need you can find a stat that makes you look smarter and feel better i don't like the fact that it feels like the cpoe stat it might be a good one i have no idea but after two preseason games the narrative they're trying to paint right there is one that i don't necessarily love and the analytics people need to get off my fucking ass all right i respect math okay i had a t9 calculator in high school yeah mm -hmm. okay i was all about it my entire livelihood for a long time revolved around numbers and math and everything like that so i I appreciate that and I like the data and analytics are are growing into football it's making people make more educated decisions but numbers can be put into any narrative we all know that and I don't like when they're being abused especially whenever it's that small of a sample size and you are the worldwide leader in sports what what yeah, yeah I, I did it yeah I did it. Hey, I'm, gl I'm glad to see your <clears throat> excuse me your follow-up tweets because what is did they explain on TV though what this means like what we had it muted. Expected completions are? <laughs> we did have it man. muted because my big question was, um, like, who's saying that should have been an expected completion? Is that the right. same number exactly. person that is doing the numbers? And if that number person is also sophisticated enough to dissect the play and say, hey, that should have been a completion, not... I respect it a lot, okay? I respect that a lot. But anytime you have human judgment in something and then you say, no, it's analytics and numbers saying this, automatically you're full of shit. Mm -hmm. Automatically you're full of shit. And, and I just don't know how to break that to you. And I thought this was a little ridiculous, although I do like analytics being introduced into the coverage of sport. I don't like whenever... You know, you can paint any picture you yeah. want. Any picture you want. I learned that whenever I was around, like, the best numbers person of all time, Hembo, because I would say something, he would give me a stat, and I'd be battling with Orlovsky, he'd give Orlovsky a stat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So me and Orlovsky are fighting against each other, and the same stats generation person was making both of our cases much more compelling, and I'm like, okay, so every stat that I see on TV then, full of shit. Uh-huh. But it's not, I shouldn't broad brush paint this thing, AJ. I shouldn't broad brush. There are a lot of stats that are very important to everything in society, but I don't like whenever they start getting abused and used to start painting narratives that are completely full of shit, I think, in my eyes. Well, does this help? I guess this, the only way this could help a quarterback, I guess, is if he has a bunch of drops. Like, if you have four or five drops... But well, then think Trey Lance has the most amount of drops. He has like seven drops or something. He's at the bottom at negative 18% or something like that. So I don't... Yeah, I guess... Is it I, golf? Do you want a lower number? Oh, maybe. No, I doubt uh, it. I Negative 18.7% doesn't sound good. Not when it's completion percentage. No. I don't even know how you do that. Well, and to your point about framing what, like, he's, Trey Lance is entrenched in, like, a quarterback battle right now. There's a good chance he's going to start. If people look at this, they take it as gospel, and it's like, oh, Trey Lance fucking sucks. Yep. Yeah, I just. That's the scary thing. That's the scary thing about it. Like, a little bit of information is very dangerous. I had a coach tell me that a long time ago. Oh, that's good. That is very good. But by the way, that's all analytics, basically. It's just like you have to know, like, okay. Well, you, I guess I'm, anal I'm not deep into analytics, but I, I would assume they would say this is one piece of the whole pie, right? So, hey, just quick question here before we move along and bury. Why can't you figure out how to put new batteries in that thing ever? Because I have a system with these boxes. Okay. I was there. I, I've been there twice and never had to replace them on air. Oh. Maybe three times. You don't times. say. 
That's why the whole thing's messed up is because the whole entire goddamn yeah, system was changed because you left it on for a whole weekend. short circuited this whole goddamn thing. But what I'm saying is I have a system over here in these boxes, you know? I put mm -hmm. them upside down if they've been used. You know, I think you've been over here stacking them all up yeah. right up. I, I mean, usually I throw them away. If I could take batteries out that are used, they usually go in the trash. Okay, I'm oh. sorry. In the middle of the show, as I'm changing the batteries, I don't get up and walk to the trash can that is not optically pleasing to maybe be sitting right behind <laughs> me on the studio. Okay, but I'm saying is I have a system, and just like everything else, laptop upside down on the ground, Disgust. Celsius right. three quarter drink right here, water over here, spilled shit here, ashtray here, this here. I mean, everything you did, including the batteries, has ruffled my feathers a little bit, but not as much as analytics being used as a weapon for bullshit. Okay, is that what you wanted to get at? Yeah, I, I so you had a, you started this with a point you were going to try to kill me for something. Well, I'm not trying to kill you. I just don't like. I was getting attacked by these nerds as if I'm some idiot. It's like yo. I guess are they saying this is like? They're not saying like this is like the this is a glaring like stat that you have to take in. Like you have to really think it's gospel, bro. CPOE. I didn't even know it had its own hashtag. No these idea. analytics people are CPOE has made its way to the NFL. I, I learned a lot about this very quickly. I was getting I Warren Sharp. He'd, be, he'd explain it to us. I, I was getting assaulted history. on the internet for being dumb. And then all the commenters, too. Look at the idiots that are just learning about CPOE. It's like, you fucking nerds. Get out of here. Well, dude. and if that was their attention, then that's all they did was just bury fucking Trey Lance. It's like, you know. Yeah. Congrats. I don't know what Trey Lance did to you, but you could have found some numbers maybe that didn't make him look like he's throwing negative 18%. The guy shouldn't have even picked up a football. They would have been better off. What yeah. does this even mean? There's guys? also the eye test. You know, no, Trevor Lawrence did not look good last night. I don't need some fucking percentage to tell me he did. He's best. Well, Better than Zach Wilson. Yeah, I think that's what they're trying to say, too, is because people are saying Trevor Lawrence isn't performing to what they expected. They're like, well, look at this stat. Check he actually this. is. Well, what, but that goes to our point that you can literally create a stat mm -hmm. for anything. They do it on every broadcast of a game. Did you know that this batter, okay, whenever it is. Above 68 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the wind is lower than 10 miles per hour. Okay. Post fifth inning with two men on base. Best hitter in the history of baseball. This guy's wow. 350. Then, boom, he strikes out. Maybe next time, whenever we get <laughs> above 65 degrees, he'll be able to do it. I mean, there are stats for everything, and I appreciate it. It makes everybody more in more informed i think but anytime you start just seeking out numbers to make things go your way and paint the image i think that's a problem and i don't think it's just in sports by the way I, I i don't i haven't dabbled in other worlds i think that is potentially a problem in a lot of different places because if you get one research with numbers it's going to be vastly different than this other research with numbers both of these people by the way allegedly qualified to be giving us numbers how can you be so opposite oh because you can do numbers in any fashion that you really want if you want to really seek for it and i think that's a problem Go ahead, there Dave. are some really really good stats out there hembo actually tweeted some out this morning did you know that in 2019 james winston had 339 successful dropbacks most in the nfl okay so hembo doesn't deserve what you just did to him because i do like hembo and we will not get into yeah. this you are not i will not let you oh i was you come on you, no, you, all I was saying was Hembo. Oh, I, I love, love him. Jameis is the Hembo's best the man. at dropping back in the NFL. I will say somebody should have told him, like, let's not put successful dropbacks into this stat because that tweet had a bunch of other stuff yes. that was incredible. Wait, what's a successful dropback? What does that even mean? See, we asked a lot of questions exactly. whenever we saw it. We, none of us really knew what it was. Like he it was, didn't fall down? That's what I, well, we think he did have a good, hey, you know how you got to turn and run backwards, basically, while yeah. you're doing your thing? He was able to do that perfectly. <laughs> it's all those workouts he does. He didn't get stepped on. He That's didn't fumble why. a snap. You see some, you know, Basic ass quarterbacks, you know, when they try to they, the leg, you know, what yeah, I mean? they hit oh, yeah. that is not up. successful. That nah. is not in the, successful. In the NFL, you see that, you see that a lot. Yeah, yeah. decent Especially amount. Yeah, whenever guys are reaching for a handoff. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? They're trying to do the, yeah. you know, what I mean. So that's we're talking not. Drop, we're talking drop backs though. Yeah, yeah, but it was well, uh, could play action. Could play play action. action. Yeah, it was play. It was a reach. You know what I mean? So show, me, show me what the show me what it looks like when the guys stumble and it's not a successful drop. <laughs> well, that's what I'm just telling you. What I think Hembo is trying to get at here is that Jameis can take a four to five, seven step drop if he has to without tripping all over himself. Jameis Winston, Hembo, once again, you do not deserve Diggs bringing this particular thing up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jameis Winston, 2019, 5,109 pass yards, most in the NFL. 41 completions at 20-plus yards, most in the NFL. Okay, that's a good step. Yeah. Hey, in the Bruce Arians offense, 
the last two quarterbacks to quarterback in that offense have had the most deep threat, right? Tom Brady had it last year. Mm -hmm. Jameis had it two years ago. 339 successful dropbacks right here. Most in the NFL. 96.1 <laughs> QBR outside of pocket. Highest in the NFL. The canvas has always been there. Let Sean Payton. Payton, he's talking about how good Jameis is, especially now that he can see and he had a year of kind of watching football and Drew Brees operate. They're saying he has a chance to be incredible, which we all agree. The successful dropbacks, though, I'm not 100% sure what that means. Does that mean he completed a pass? Like there, there's no way, not 339. He didn't, yeah, there's uh, no way he had 339 uh, completions. He might have. Might have. So yeah. we just need to know what an unsuccessful dropback is. I was trying to show you, but you were laughing at you because you can't Can take you drop, Do it like a full one, though. You like, actually do it. You were just kind of farting around. I wasn't farting around. I was trying to do an unsuccessful dropback, dude. So, like, dude, you got to do the cadence and everything. Can you snap me? Well, yeah, of course. Get, you me to, yeah. Get in the pistol. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go. I want to go under center. Just, what? Just the hand. Oh, under, okay. under center. Yeah. No, no, under, under center. center. Make it real, man. I mean, you're very low right now. I mean, I am Mike Lennon here. <laughs> center out! Oh, no, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> Offsides. <laughs> Offsides. Offsides. That was broke his that finger. That was not a successful job. Back, Back up. Okay, that was not a successful. Oh. Center out! <laughs> Green 19! Green 19! Center out! That's not successful. You see that? Stumble. So you're just you're a stumble. Angle. You don't have to fall down. Look at stumble that. is you dacked it. <laughs> oh no. That's a cramp. Oh no. I just had a cramp. Hey. <laughs> okay. You think that's a successful drop back, AJ? It's not. You hear me? Stop fucking with having those stats, dude. Thank I you. Thank you for clarifying. For a second, I thought your ankle was actually sideways. Well, I forgot what I was doing, actually. I wanted to do a picture-perfect five-step. Because sure. you know, <laughs> Frank and Clyde would be very pissed off about that. I feel like the Ducks were pretty good there, by the way, out there on the pond. feel yeah. pretty good about yeah. it. A little green 19, because me and other legends do that same exact thing. Mm -hmm. so in 2019, he had 626 attempts, and he had 380 completions. Jesus. So go oh. to the number. Go to the number. 339 successful dropbacks. I don't so know 380 completions. Somehow, in 41 of them, Okay, he, he didn't drop back. He just threw that thing. Yeah, yep. chucked him straight play, out. <laughs> what is play action? Does that what does that mean? Mm, great question. Huh? The only one was forty one play actions. Hey, Maybe. don't you think though? I think Jameis his play action mechanics are beautiful. You can't like he, run pass like looks the same. Whatever everything he does, I, I really like his mechanics. I like. I don't know if you're fucking with me or not. I don't think dead I think serious. dead serious. He he does work on everything. Clyde oh, Christensen, yeah. quarterback coach for Tampa Bay, was like too he he works almost to a fault too hard. Yeah. He does too much work almost. Like that has never been something that Jameis has ever struggled with. I'm excited though because it feels like he's having a good time down there. Mm -hmm. He's dancing in practice. He's completely bought into the fact that he is Jameis Winston. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if this is something new or if he's always done this. I feel like maybe we're just learning more and more about him here. He's almost a babyface now. Like he's almost babyface in this entire thing. I think a lot of people are pulling for him now, as opposed to a year or two ago, where there, for whatever reason, people were anti Jameis. It feels like now everybody's like, "Oh, let's go, Jameis." And if you think, you know, of him. Kamara, yeah, Callaway, Thomas, Taysom, with an offensive line that seems to be pretty fucking good, by the way. Oh, yeah. I'm not hurt. So, with that defense, it looks like they got a team. It looks like the, the Saints are all the way back. Now, does Sean Payton still want to give Taysom Hill another shot to figure it out, see if he's the guy or not, with a start in the third preseason, see if he's good? Don't want to name a starter? I don't know. But what if this is the year of Jameis, man? What a year this is going to happen. Now, in his, in his division, he has the reigning Super Bowl champs, the old team he came from, and they got every single starter back yeah. on both sides and in the kicking game somehow. And also a wide receiver that didn't start but caught a touchdown whose name is Antonio Brown. It's just – that's going to be a tough road for anybody in the NFC South, but – Jameis appears to be the guy going. Well, and to Hembo's point, like, wouldn't it benefit Sean Payton and his offense to have Taysom Hill not play quarterback so that he can, you know, use him all over the place? And I think Booger was talking about it in the pregame. Yeah. I think Booger was talking about how, you know, because – I think it was Booger talking about Taysom plays special teams as well. Like, yes. what Taysom does is the gadget player. He, there's only one Taysom Hill. Right, it's like he is. I actually think they should have think about it with Strafolsky over there in Arizona. Yeah. After watching him run and run people over, he looked athletic. Could he catch a ball? 
I mean, who knows? But Taysom Hill created his own kind of lane. Now, Cordell Stewart did it in the past, and there has been others. I think Edelman has played Mm -hmm. on both sides. There has been others that have done it. But the Taysom Hill gadgetness has become a weapon for New Orleans. So not only does Taysom have to outperform Jameis, he also has to perform at a level that it's worth losing that potential deception or distraction or whatever it is for that. And at this point, I think we can all say publicly, we haven't seen the practices and behind closed doors what's going on. But publicly, it looks like, hey, still going to be able to keep that. Everything that Drew had with Taysom coming on, defense not knowing what the formation is, how many tight ends, who's playing quarterback, which is kind of good uh, in the old misdirection of the defense. It feels like that's going to be the way it is. Will Taysom have to buy into that? I assume he will. Well, I mean, and you mentioned Jameis being the babyface now. Does Taysom saying, like, hey, if I'm not playing quarterback, I want the hell out of here? Doesn't that help Jameis be more of a babyface? That was a heel promo, yeah. 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 That was a heel promo. And don't you take from that, though, when you hear Taysom say that that he is done playing special teams? I don't, I don't see him covering kickoffs. It doesn't sound like he wants to be doing that. He wants to be the starting quarterback. Yeah, if I was training to be quarterback all off season, and I just signed a uh, four-year, $160 million deal, all years voidable, $40 million a year, just in case I become a franchise quarterback and we can renegotiate the contract up to about $40 million a year because that's, I guess, the policy in the NFL. If you were to renegotiate a contract within 18 months of when you sign a contract, you can only go up to the highest or whatever, whatever, whatever the voidable contract meant. He was staring down potential $160 million franchise quarterback, yeah. and he went all in. He started training for that. That might be a tough pill for him to swallow to say, all right, I'm going to go run down on a fucking kickoff. That's a little bit different. You know, you're putting your life in danger. So him and Sean are going to have to talk about that if that becomes the case. But it's a wild scene down there. Jameis looked good the last night. He time. did. He looked very good. One quarter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The LASIK worked. One quarter. He could see who he was throwing to. It looked unbelievable. And let's not forget on Nickelodeon. Threw a touchdown yes, there, too. He did. He did. Mitchell Trubisky won the MVP, but a lot of people are saying, why not Jameis? He yeah. comes in one throw, one tud. What are we thinking here? Jameis' workouts and his, I don't want to say, because I hate it when people say, like, he's kind of quirky, like, right? He's kind of, yeah. it feels like he's kind of quirky a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah, like, he, you know, like, I think that'll, I would like to see him succeed, but. Yeah. Showed Cam Jordan, like, laughing with him, joking around with him, too. It feels like the locker room likes him, too. It's starting to get behind him yeah. a little bit. Hey, last year this guy was a little bit too much. You know? <laughs> yeah. We're like, all right, dude, chill out. But Drew was right whenever he was saying, his, his, your, your team. Team. Has Drew ruled out coming back? No, no way. Not, yeah. Absolutely not. That'll never Really? Is he, is he still keeping his options open? Always. I think so. I mean, he's working out harder than ever. He was visiting mm-hmm. practices, talking to a couple people. I mean, there's a lot going but on. But only for the Saints, or would he go somewhere else, you think? Uh, he was at the Chargers practice at one time, too. Yeah, watching he Herbert and said, hey, that guy's he forearms look there. like he's been digging fence posts. <laughs> yeah. That might be the biggest compliment ever from a Texas person. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Hey, your forearms look like you've been fucking digging fence posts out there. That has to be such a compliment. If I was told that by somebody from Texas... That might become my Twitter bot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Literally immediately. <laughs> Do you think maybe Drew Brees was the one to tell Justin Herbert, like, hey, if you need to go grab the ball back, you go grab the ball back. You're QB1. Don't oh, let the training staff You're talking do about it. in that mic'd up no. thing where Herbert was carrying the bag and not one single equipment manager went running over saying, you're a starting quarterback. Put the fucking bag down. <laughs> that worried me. That worried me, AJ. It literally did. Why? Why did worry, worry you so much? <sighs> that mic'd up was the first one I've ever watched, and by the end of it, I go, I don't know what, what just happened here. I, I don't know if I like him more or less because of this mic. Normally it's, oh, I like this person a lot more because of how everybody's interacting with them. You know, like I like seeing how people interact with them because I think you learn quickly how people feel about people whenever you see how they're interacting in practice after something good or something bad, whether it's his teammates or equipment managers or athletic trainers. Like I just want to see how people, and I think they edited out every single interaction unless it was with Chase Daniel. I don't think he's going to make that team. Sure, but it was, it was... Easton Sick is a the, damn good boy. Watching that game, I mean, Jesus, fuck. he took like three sacks for like 20 plus yard losses. It's like, hey, I get that this guy's supposed to, but like, at what point, I don't know what they're paying him either. At what point is it like, all right, this guy fucking stinks. We got to get him out of here. <laughs> they liked Easton Stick too before they drafted Herbert. Like, Easton Stick was the guy, the first guy that started dribbling the ball, yeah, right? Yes. Yep. Great ball. Great ball gymnastics, right? That guy? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Chase Daniel is, he, Missouri, right? University of Missouri? Yeah, I think yeah, it was whenever yeah. I was in school. I yeah. think he was in Missouri. Um, he gets drafted to... I think he was undrafted. Sixth he round. Was he? Seventh round, maybe? I don't know. Undrafted 2009. Saints? 
Uh, first team was uh, the Washington Washington. team. Yeah, Washington. Washington. Then he went to the Saints. Yes. Then he went to the Lions. Chiefs. Chiefs. Then he went to the Lions. Eagles. Then he went to the Lions. Saints. Then he went to the Lions. Bears. Then he went to the Lions. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Now he's at the Chargers. Yep. It is the backup or backup quarterback journey that he has had. I assume he's a weapon in the film room. Right. I assume he's a weapon behind the scenes. The backup quarterback doesn't just have to be good in preseason, okay? The backup quarterback probably does a lot of homework for the starting quarterback, does a lot of other things. That's probably where Chase is, you know, at this stage of his career, where a lot of his benefit comes from. But I don't know if it's right to keep three quarterbacks because of that. I don't think he that's He gets gonna... paid pretty handsomely as a backup, too, doesn't he? Well, he's like a coach, you know? Yeah. Like a backup quarterback, especially a veteran for a young guy, is almost like a coach. Matt Hasselbeck, you know, he was brought mm-hmm. up. For the young rece- for receivers, too. They're like a coach to especially young receivers, telling them how the quarterback wants the routes run. Like, every hey, you're going eight and a half. You're not going nine. You're not going eight. Like, you, they have to be like that specific and dial them in because the starter can't deal with every single guy. Yeah, and there are sometimes bad cop, I think. You know, I think yeah. sometimes they're bad cop instead of the quarterback, mm-hmm. starting quarterback being the bad cop. Like, Peyton obviously was okay telling somebody, like, hey, you're going to run to there, and then you're going to stop. And if you're not, you're going to be off the fucking field. <laughs> Some people, like Hasselbeck, will, would have to go over and be like, hey, instead of, you can maybe, because Andrew likes it, like, and Andrew would also have those conversations, but I think the backup quarterback is almost like a consultant advisor if it's that veteran to young guy. And Chase Daniel obviously being behind Mahomes mm-hmm. and Drew and Matthew Stafford and, and all these – and Mitch, Mitchell Trubisky, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He has – hey, he balled out against the Bears. He did. Right? He looked good. Oh, yeah. Hey. He balled out. I saw a couple clips of him with part of my take. Looked like he's very happy and comfortable with <laughs> yeah. it. Looks like he is very, very happy to be a Buffalo Bill. But that's the type of shit that he adds that even though he looked – terrible in that bad game. he looked hey mike tomlin said yesterday um you know if you're playing in a jv game and you're a varsity player you better look like a varsity player playing against jv players basically and that was his answer for how <laughs> players need to look against so the twos or the threes and they're playing chase daniel did not appear that way quarterback positions depend upon a lot of other things so until they dive into the film uh he has to be serviceable obviously but i think it's all the other shit that he brings well and like you said it's probably one of those things where like when you know they were talking about peyton with the reps it's like hey guess what if 18 goes down like we're fucked doesn't matter who's behind Mm -hmm. him and it's probably similar situation with herbert right it's like if he goes down they're not expecting uh chase daniel to to win them 12 games this year yeah if justin herbert goes down Season's over. That was, I forget what assistant coach said that, or maybe it was a strength coach or something, you know, because our backup quarterbacks were literally tasked with doing homework for Peyton almost. Like, hey, I need you to look at every single nickel, whatever, and tell me something about blah, 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 or whatever. And they get no reps in practice. I'm like, what's going on? They're like, you think we win if that fucking guy isn't playing anyway? <laughs> yeah. Why are we wasting any reps on anybody else? Like, we have a lot of respect for them or anything like that. This team is built around that guy being good. And then when he left, we weren't. I mean, that is real. That team right now is Herbert's team. Now, granted, if Chase Daniel goes in, will he be able to win you some games? And you hope a backup quarterback like Teddy Bridgewater or Taysom was able to do when Drew goes down. But I think that whole narrative that people go, you got to have a good number two just in case. It's like, well, if you got a number one that's real, Let's just figure out how we make that motherfucker as good as possible because that's going to be what you need. We have to get to a break, I believe, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have not gone to a break. Mm -hmm. We've gone to breaks in previous hours on this show. Sure. Sure. Yes. So we have gone to a break before. Yes. Yes. Are we playing music right now or can I? We are. It just just came on. Okay, good. I think my thing's dead again. Oh, right. no. Six <laughs> batteries today. Nothing. Well, that's because AJ's putting dead ones back into the goddamn box. Oh, you put some live batteries in there, man. Stop putting your dead ones back. Hey, okay. I'm about to get live, okay? Hell yeah. With okay. you, pal. Oh, okay. After the break? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm driving to Ohio. You're about, right. you're about to get cubed, dude. Yeah, you are. You're about to get ice cubed, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. You As need to I go grabbed- watch that scene. Hey, by the way, whenever he we came back to the three shot... And I was just sitting there with a fucking bat over my shoulder. I wonder if Ice Cube was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Baseball show. And I was going to pull the trigger on that question earlier. And then for some reason, I was like, wait, was that Ice Cube that did it? And I had doubts. Zito came in. and was like, yes. Oh, yeah. That's literally what Zito said. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I was like, okay, thank you, Zito. I appreciate that. That What a moment that had to be. Man. As somebody who has wanted to do that to a couple executives' desks, watching that scene, I was like, this is Awesome. This is the greatest. And thing then coaching up his son to like recreate what he did. That's no, no, you gotta go. 
<laughs> you gotta go hit that one and then fuck them too, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. All right, we'll end this uh, show with some phone calls on this beautiful Tuesday, August 24th. Then Chris Mad Dog Rich will have a much better show than us on Sirius. We'll roll into after hours at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show. We'll see you in four minutes. Thank you. I was told by Del Curry, Scotty Pippen struggles on a golf course, right? Right. I was told at that thing that I'm going against Scotty Pippen the next day, match play, heads up, one on one, Scotty Pippen. So we decide, like, okay, we'd probably have a couple drinks, stay at the casino a little bit longer than we should. <laughs> Representing the NFL out of the Shoeless Golf Club of America, Pat McAfee. His opponent, representing the NBA, Scotty Pippen. You know what I mean? This guy's got six rings. Yeah. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> but today, he's going to play against me. And then I start seeing Scotty hit some shots that are just, like, starting to come together. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I think I was lied to. We were lied to yesterday. We were told Scotty Pippen was a terrible golfer. Probably Scotty fucking Pippen. Going in the back nine, I think I was down one. Like, we were really, like, we were battling. But I started making putts. And Scotty Pippen went ahead and got real hot. I mean, <laughs> real fucking hot. I was down three with seven left. And I looked right in the camera, and I go, Straight down three, with like seven holes left. Scotty Pippen's about to get this work. Scotty Pippen from 190 yards out just fucking dunks it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking boom, bang, and then walks up to the green, gets the ball, cameras on him, and he goes, Pippen ain't easy. Shit. <laughs> 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 Down four with six left after Scotty Pippen just chips him from fucking 400 yards out. <laughs> I, I was fucking demoralized. Uh, Pippen yeah. ain't easy. <laughs> By the way, best he's ever performed at golf because I'm around. Better teammate than Jordan. Yep. People forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I told Dell. Oh, yeah. I was like, Dell, what the fuck are you lying to me? He was like, well, I saw it yesterday. He was not great. And Greg Anthony told me, and I was like, Dell, he. Buried me, Del Curry. <laughs> he buried me. He was like, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby, it's time to celebrate. Talking about a shotgun of beer after he had beat me, obviously. I, I like teach him how to do it. Yeah, put a hole in there. It might spread a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah, so you're going to go here, and then you're going to open and flip up. Does that make sense? Congrats on winning the NBA a couple of times. Blah, 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 blah. And being an incredible golfer. <laughs> Cheers, Appreciate it. Hey, 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 hey. Damn. Okay, Scotty. That's the best Bud Light I ever had. <laughs> hey, there's no stock in the three years anyway. You're right. <laughs>Men's health brand that can dance very well and make you the best you possible. Are you suffering from male pattern baldness? John, we got something for that. Herpes. See ya. Premature ejaculation. John, no more coming too quick. Allergies as well. And that's not all. We have clinically tested supplements for everything, including. Erectile dysfunction. Come on! Bye bye! GetRoman.com forward slash Pat. Be the best you possible. Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. SeatGeek is today's sponsor, and we got a special promo for all of you. Everybody? What? Everybody. Everybody. Okay. Not just first-time buyers or users, something that has never happened before for years. We've been asking SeatGeek to do this, and today and this week in this promo, they have come through. Ooh. Let's go. Yes. In honor of football being all the way back and SeatGeek being all the way back, they gave us a special link that gives everybody 15% off all football tickets, whether you're a first-time buyer 
or not. Wow. Holy and shit. if you do recall, SeatGeek is the greatest ticket buying platform on planet Earth and the, the moon. moon. That's right, because they scan all the tickets on the internet and make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. If it's green, that means good. If it's red, that means you're overpaying for the ticket. You won't get catfished either. You will buy what you will get. You will experience what you bought, not catfishing like some other bullshit. No, no, no. SeatGeek takes all the guesswork out of it. They say, hey, this is a good deal. This is a good ticket. This is where you need to go. And they have tickets for everything. But right now, the tickets to football games, 15% off when you go to the link in our description at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show. No code, just click the link. It'll be auto applied to your account. Doesn't matter if you've purchased on SeatGeek before. We have no idea how long this will last. It cost them a lot of money whenever we first announced this. Yeah. Let's continue to hammer this home before they shut this off. 15% off all football tickets when you go to the link in the bio of this particular show right now at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show. Up to $50 off, by the way. Okay. Wow. Okay, so that's a little caveat, I, I guess. 15% off all football tickets from your friends at SeatGeek, the sponsor of today's show. We appreciate the hell out of you, SeatGeek. Uh, we got some bad news coming out of the break here. It, it happened, I guess, 15, 20 minutes ago. It has been announced and the news has been broken that superstar running back out of Clemson, now number one for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Travis Etienne Jr., has a Liz Frank injury that could keep him out for a couple months, if not the entire season. Season. This is a nightmare for a guy who is being considered as one of the nicest dudes, hardest working dudes, most explosive dudes, a guy that just buys into every single system he's a part of. He could have left Clemson a year earlier than he did, wanted to come back and have unfinished business. Now he's suffering a foot injury. The timeline is 12 weeks minimum for Travis Etienne, but we have seen... We have seen timelines get busted before. He'll have surgery as soon as possible and then would have a chance to come back late in the season if all goes well and it makes sense, says Ian Rappaport. Rap sheet. It is a Liz Frank injury, which is a nightmare. I believe this is something that is, uh, I don't want to say it lingers, but I think Liz Frank is a big time problem, AJ. Giant. It's a, it's a big uh, a, a big time. I think like something dislocates, like a bone breaks off and dislocates somewhere in your foot. Like it's a nasty surgery, nasty injury. Like if he came back this year, I'd be. I'd be very impressed. Especially with the way he plays. He's pretty yeah, uh, he's shifty. pretty explosive, shifty. He's He was going to be a lot of fun to watch. And now the Jacksonville Jaguars team that we just watched last night who has some offensive deficiencies now lose out on there. He's first rounder, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah he and Trevor Lawrence both had a Clemson first rounder. He was unbelievable to watch play at Clemson. I hope we get a chance to see him in the NFL. I think Liz Frank is something comes apart, right? On the bottom, bottom of your foot. I yeah, think. I think the bottom of your foot comes apart or something like that, so they gotta like yeah. put it back in there. And need the Colts oh, doctor. Call that guy up immediately. Not, and get not, him. Not, he's not, he's not. Uh, not vision, dude. Listen, yeah. what? I'm all about Dr. David Porter maybe fixing every foot going forward, and I said that just yesterday. Yeah. We need to get this doctor that did Quentin Nelson and Cam, uh, 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 Carson Wentz's foot surgeries and got them back in like 14 days. It was supposed to be five to 12 weeks. Let's have him do every surgery. Not in the AFC South. Can't do it. Not in the AFC South. What are you, are you going to send the Patriots? You know, Guerrero, mm -hmm. whenever he was up there, you guys just send him around to the Jets and the Bills and everything? Well, we didn't even use him in our own building. Why would we, why would we send him around to other teams? Hey, that, sure. was, a, that was a bad decision, by the way. Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and plus you got Mac Jones, so fuck it. Does Guerrero have an office down there in Tampa? Uh, I assume they just let him ride around and do whatever the hell he wants. Hey, man, if you want to get pliable on everybody in here, guy, we've got a lot of old guys. We want, to, we want to play another 10 years or so. If you need to do all your fucking avocado ice cream stuff, go ahead and do it. Have at it. Do what you got to do. Let's go to the 5 Energy phone line, shall we? Go to 5 Use promo code MACFEE to receive 10% off your order. Uh, 5 Hour Energy's website is 5-H-O-U-R-Energy.com. Use promo code MACFEE to receive 10% off all your favorite flavors like watermelon, what? tropical burst, what? And cherry, what? And peach mango, what? and more. There's a flavor for everyone, and that shot will give you at least five hours of energy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you, Z. Let's go to Dave down here in Jacksonville on the 5 Hour Energy phone line. What's going on, Dave? <laughs> Oh, got me. <laughs> There's something to change in that one. I don't know if anybody's seen that or not. Oh, yeah. A little bit of a change there. Happy for that. What do you want to talk about, Dave, down there in Duval? Well, I appreciate you boys, but those Seat Geek tickets are going to be 50% off in Jacksonville if Trevor Lawrence gets hurt because our own line can't stop the floodgate from coming through. Dave, it's just preseason. Go ahead and relax. But, boy, it did look eerily similar to what Joey Burrow was battling with last year. The offensive line is something that the great teams invest in. 
And it seems like the shitty teams refuse to look at. It is where you win games. You ask offensive linemen, they'll never say that. Offensive linemen never speak. But it is very apparent that the team with the better offensive line normally wins. If they got a guy quarterback, we assume Trevor is one of those. Joey Burrow is as well, AJ. Yeah, I don't know exactly what they're like all the guys that make up their O-line, but you got to draft well, too. If you want to have a successful O-line, like you need to hit on some of those third, fourth-round guys that become like staples for years. Even undrafted free agents yeah, that you bring right. in that maybe mold and fit. Because I think a lot of it now, obviously, technique and strength and grit. I think if you're an NFL offensive lineman, you have to have all of those things. But I think the chemistry is a big deal. Whenever you get the right group of off, they are the tightest bunch in any team, the offensive line. And I think whenever you see them all on the same page, that's whenever you really have problems with everybody. And, and you know, like O-linemen, they are, they are their own little cult on a football team. So chemistry is gigantic. That's why when you have a group of five guys that have been playing together for 15 games and all of a sudden one of them gets hurt and is out, the new guy coming in, he better have some good chemistry with those guys as well. And they better trust him that they can count on him to do his job. Yeah, that swing man, or swing men if it's two of them, they they have to be just as if it, they're a starter, but basically they're on the sideline. They have to hang out with them. They have to be a part of it. That is, that whole being on the same page with each other is so vital in the offensive line room. And whenever you see offensive lines that there's like, oh, oh we got a couple good guys on the offensive line, it's like, okay, so you guys have a terrible offensive line. That, <laughs> yeah. that means that there's not, you know what I mean? It's... It, the Colts' success we have seen, Chris Ballard has invested mightily in the offensive line. He's like, let's have success here. And Carson Wentz saw that, who didn't have one in Philly. I wish Andrew uh, would have potentially turned the page because of the, the offensive line we had. But you look at the Chiefs, they just revamped their offensive line. Look at the Bucks' offensive line. I mean, they're, anybody that's good, that's worth a fuck, has a great offensive line. It's something you got to invest in. And maybe that's something Urban Meyer will uh, work on this next offseason. Or maybe they have a great team that will be able to come together in the offensive line. Right? Well, look at the Packers. Like last year when Bakhtiari got hurt, and then in the NFC yeah. Championship, Jason Pierre-Paul had like yeah. 45 pressures. Like it changed the entire outcome of the season. Go ahead, Diggs. Quick. After ours. Okay, perfect. AJ, any Anything to say to the serious listeners as Chris Mad Dog Rose will take the reins here in about six minutes? No, tell them to tune in to After Hours. We'll be on here on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Nah, <laughs> you should listen to Chris Mad Dog Rose. His show will be better than I ours. too. Both of them. Yeah, have them both on. Maybe one on radio, one on the internet. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Wow. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Who put the cold drinks hot takes? Wow. To be honest, we need a couple different versions of this because it is getting a little boring to look at. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was a big deal whenever it was created. We felt it's cool. I think it's great. Well, it separates, uh, you know, sports show from the after relaxed, after casual after. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It sets the mood, yeah. sets the tone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Really builds, uh, sets the tone, and, and lets us know like what what's about to happen. Yeah, and yeah, what do you think's about to happen? I have no idea. Why'd you say it? Like? Unpredictable. It's unpredictable. That's all it's, to, that's all it's telling you. You never know, especially with your brain. We have no clue. Well, yeah. legit. I don't either. But <laughs> did you did you listen to the Jason Wright conversation earlier? I actually, no, I missed all of it. How was oh, it? Oh, he's good. fucking cool, man. So good. He's a real. I think he's awesome. Yeah. I'm happy he's a president. You know, like, that's a big step. That, he that, gets it. Yes. He's a, he gets it. He seems like a rational dude that gets it. And he understands what's going on. And where was he before this? He was at a consulting firm that basically came into businesses in the middle of a PR crisis <laughs> yeah. and fixed them. Uh -huh. And that's basically what the Washington football team was in the middle of. It. I mean, you don't even hear about how terrible of a company they were just one year ago. I mean, that was all anybody was talking about. It fired 90%, he said, turnover. Yep. Of the top two layers of the, so, yeah, I mean. For good reason, some for good reason, and most for bad, he said. We have 90% turnover here. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole new company almost over there, and they're about to have a new name, or maybe the Washington Football. It didn't sound like Washington Football Team was going to be one of the no, names. It didn't. No, not at all. So once we get to the final three, we can just say, "Oh, we got final two here." Yeah, because mm -hmm. I assume Washington. Will be did he say when? Like, did he have a deadline? Yeah, yeah. So next year is their ninetieth year, and he said he plans on making the announcement during the ninety-year mm -hmm. celebration. You know, for the next whatever going forward. That's a massive. He was just a good guy, Talk and including you. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm gonna be a part of the announcement. He said, "All right, you yeah. should. I mean, you should be the guy that announces it like, officially." Yes. No, 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 no. But if they if they're gonna do like one word, you know that what's that game where you say one word of a sentence? Telephone. Telephone. You send a message. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that word that game that you play where you popcorn. Say, 
Maybe Popcorn Charades? You, no, Charades nah. is a good game, though. I'm like, pretty good at that game. Great game. Uh, I am, too. Great game. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty good at that game, too. Hmm. Oh, I, would, I mean, we could team up. We would dominate, or we could play against each other. It'd be fun. I think we should team up. I don't like playing with a bad trades player. You know what I mean? My You're wife, right. great trades player, by the way. My wife, very yeah. good trades player as well. I watch uh, thousand dollar, a hundred thousand dollar pyramid every once in a while. A lot of trades in there. Yep. A lot of trades in there. There are some terrible is that, describers. Is that Alec Baldwin? Who Michael Strahan. You're talking about the match game, is what you're talking about. With, yes. uh, I'm a big game show guy. Wife and I watch the hell out of game shows. I think I'm supposed to be a game show host. That probably happened at one point. You were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At one time. I was right yeah. in here. Yeah. I was a pretty big set. Did a lot of stuff. Shout out. Shout out. Shout, Shout out. out. Is Aaron going to host Jeopardy? When? I, I think eventually he will, yeah. That was conversation today. Yeah, they've been talking yeah. about it for eight straight days. So. Get up. Wait, who? Yeah, yeah, the TV. Yeah. I, saw, I saw some get up. I saw Swagoo arguing with Sacho about uh, the Jameis. I think Swagoo, what? Sacho said no. Or no, Sacho said Cam Newton's definitely still the starter. doesn't matter if he misses five days. And Swagoo kind of disagreed with him. Yeah, Lombardi so. kind of told us that yesterday, though. Kind of what Sacha said. Yeah, he does. I mean, because his explanation was like, if you put Mac in and he starts to struggle, then like, do you take Mac out and just ruin his confidence? This is just sense. like the Urban Meyer, Trevor Lawrence. Exactly. Urban Meyer was the way they were talking. How Urban Meyer was talking. I don't, I, and I don't want to put words in Urban Meyer's mouth. Okay, I don't want to do that. But the way they were talking is, Urban Meyer was like scared to death of Trevor going out there, having a bad couple weeks, six, seven weeks, whatever it is, and just being completely dead, and then having to pull him and put in Gardner. And it's like, okay, so our first overall pick is now done. So I think you have to balance that. I like the self-awareness, by the way, of Urban. Like, I don't think our team is good enough to be ruining this general. Hey, by the way, Trevor, you and me are going to be together for at least the next four to five years. I'm not letting you fuck, let this get fucked up here in the first couple of weeks when uh-huh. we don't have a team ready, which I respect and appreciate, actually. I actually uh, I do appreciate that. I don't know how the fans feel it, feel about it or whatever, but that's going to be a tough decision not to put Trevor in game one. Was it uh, Orshlovsky that said like they think they should name him the starter just so he gets all the, the reps with the number ones in practice? Yeah, but we don't know what's going on in practice anyway. Yeah, you're right. You're right. We all we know is when they when somebody loses their individual competitions and then they announce it, right? Yeah, because like, what if Trevor Lawrence is running with the ones when the cameras aren't allowed to be out, and then Gardner Minshew is getting some ones? It's like you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what we can all buy. Dan was wide open on the internet last night. Wide open. I'm gonna call him right now. CJ oh, Beathard yeah. should be getting some yeah. fucking yeah. run with the ones. That's QB one. Bullshit. Yeah. That's QB one. Yeah, it should be. The Came back, scored 18 night. points in the fourth. He's at least QB two. I mean, we just know with Orlovsky, it's never the quarterback's fault. Yeah, it's gone right now. Let me see if he answers. Is that, is one of those shows on I'm there? live. I'm live. We're live. I'm live. I'm live. Oh, real mature, Dan. What a sellout. He's driving. He was driving. Oh, okay, so he's trying to be safe. Yeah, and it was so, unpossible. still answered, though. Yeah, but I think it was, it was on a pause screen, so I think he had it plugged in oh, probably. Ah, yeah. uh, sure. Yeah. He's probably driving Navigation. Somewhere. But he knows what was coming. Uh-huh. Yeah. He knew what was coming. Smart, by the way. He's got a lot going on. He needs not to deal with me going, what the fuck are you doing after a second preseason? <laughs> he just didn't want the smoke. Whoa. Was, he wasn't ready for it. Nah. I think he was ready for it. Just like AJ said, Dan was ready for that. Always. Whatever we were going to say. Dan today. doesn't just, he doesn't just throw things out there. There's a lot of people that do that. I feel like Dan is very calculated and he wants to be able to back up whatever his argument may be. It's actually very calculated. Yeah, well, quite it's quite a psychopath. Uh, quite quite a calculated. Scottish warrior now. Quite whatever calculated. I got a sword. Gump. Gump, do you iron your t-shirt? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, do you? What's that? Do you iron your t-shirts? I have a uh, steamer. Oh, good. You're, nice. I mean, you're a fashionable dude, honestly. Thanks, AJ. Hey, Appreciate I'm it. Live. Live. Is that all right? Uh oh. Okay, can we answer some questions while we're live? Okay, (laughs) so you're okay with going live here? Shut up. Okay, so. All right, so Dan Orlovsky is currently driving, has his phone down. He wants to do his legally and safely, so he is just a phone call right now. The screen says pause. Dan, let's talk about you wanting a guy fired after a second preseason game down there in Jacksonville. Your thoughts? I don't want him fired. I just think that you got to sit there and go, here's my thing. Two Windows open? Games in, Shut up. And that offense looks very, very, very <laughs> vanilla and basic. And I get the people that are going, well, they're, they're hiding stuff, they're holding stuff. For the regular season, I have two thoughts on that. Number one, both coordinator and quarterback coach, Brian Schottenheimer and Daryl Bevel, have been in the NFL for like 30 years. 
held. They've got, they've, there's plenty of tape on those guys as far as what they like to do and don't do. So hiding stuff doesn't make a ton of sense. Number two, if they were hiding stuff or being very vanilla on offense in comparison to what they're going to do in the regular season, why was Urban Meyer so emotional on the sidelines? Because like he is Urban Meyer. But if I'm the head coach and I know that we are going to be doing things that's uh. not conducive to us playing well, uh. why would I be sitting there so emotionally tied to the result? I know that in three weeks I'm not doing anything that I'm doing. So, like, that's my, my belief on that. I'm not saying fire those guys at all. What I'm saying is Damn. you better be sitting there long and hard they if you're doing what you're going to be doing and going, we might have to be getting thinking about a different answer here. You you did say that you hoped they got a new offense coordinator, which means you did want them fired a little bit. But yeah. I do respect your take on this, and I think it goes back to what you told us. You said if an offensive coordinator isn't using isn't using every inch of the field to their advantage, like some offensive coordinators have been able to figure out, you're doing your team a disservice. Is that what you were referring to? In what offense are you directly referring? Is that the Shanahan Lafleur offense that is being run right now? opponent that they played last night in the Saints. I mean, the Saints do the same type of stuff. You know, and, and my thing would be like, the Jaguars went into the game, they went into this season with a bad offensive line, and they played three backups last night. Why would you be exposing the weakest part of your offense on a constant basis? Why would the quarterback be holding the ball for these long developing plays so much? You know, and so, so when I talk about these offenses that are our kick. Pushing the envelope with the new, new good offenses. Yeah. Tunnel? He's, He's talking about off. Gosh, um, I'm, I'm blanking the head coach for the Atlanta Falcons. Arthur, Arthur, Smith. Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith. You know, it's these, yeah, it is these coaches that are constantly stressing 53 and a third by 100 yards. And you're not, they're obviously not doing that in Jackson, though. He can't hear me. All right, me. thank you, Dan. Uh, Hey, did you get attacked on the internet? He did. Yeah. Sorry, we had to mute you in the middle of that. We're getting an answer from the quarterback whisperer, fucking Dan Orlovsky. In the middle of that. And I knew what he was referring to, by the way, but the internet didn't. It's second preseason game. I think Dan is saying, hey, there's a chance that Trevor Lawrence is going to be set up to fail here because there's offenses that are very innovative, very quick, that the scheme actually makes the quarterback better as opposed to the quarterback having to figure it all out, drop back, do the whole thing. But if Trevor Lawrence is a drop back quarterback, I assume a lot of people say, Let's let him learn and develop here as opposed to the gimmick offense that maybe he wants to run. But you can have both. I just – a lot of people are saying Dan was being a little bit over dramatic last night. But maybe he's right. We'll find out if he's right here, like, what, 10 weeks? Yeah, but also the Jags spent a shit ton of money to make the team better. Like, did they just not address the fact that their offensive line wasn't that good and didn't help them out at all? Did you say three starters were out? Is that right? Yeah, and then he said they weren't good last year and three starters were out. They had backups, and then that made him wonder even more. Like, why is Trevor sitting back there if you got a terrible offensive line and you know it? And maybe that's what Urban Meyer was upset about. Maybe that's why Urban Meyer was getting emotional. Is like, Hmm. hey, we know we got nobody to protect this guy. We are only going how he goes. Let's keep him alive out there. Uh, but Dan got killed on the internet. I think it was uh, Urban's Papa John's didn't get there at halftime. Okay. You think maybe his heart was having a little thing he needed yeah. to get on a golf cart? And migraine. In the migraine. Weren't a lot of people taking shots at Urban, though, when he hired all these guys because he kind of handpicked them because he wanted, like, a bunch of NFL experience. They're like, yeah, but you just got a bunch of fucking guys who've been recycled at a bunch of different places who are kind of also Rans, and it's just like, okay. Like, good luck. Hopefully yeah. the Jags are going to be able to you know, Hey, what's something. this all about, Ty Barry and the coaching staff? Is he talking about Schlegs? No. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, so Daryl Bevel Jeez. is the offensive player. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you all right? You okay? Jesus. Was that real? Huh? Yeah. It's all your that was fault, real. AJ. Yeah, it was. Slipped on the Ohio State cereal box. You okay? Guys, is your knee all right? Well, that was a problem. Oh, fucking smacked his head on the stage, too. <laughs> Looks like you're doing the milk crate challenge. Dude, yeah, it felt like it. What this, happened? What? <laughs> You'll never understand it, dude. <laughs> right, I won't. You'll never understand. I get it. That's, that seat is awful. It's very uncomfortable, and it slides out from under you. Is that what just happened? Look, and I, I also didn't break anything somehow. You see that? Huh. I just well, got put into just, a sharpshooter by my goddamn yeah. chair. And I mean, I, that was the slowest fall I've ever seen. Well, the issue was, so this is what happened, AJ. You see this thing, this this button here. You see it's the one that makes it go up and down. 
Yeah, yeah. So when I turned, you know, I got Air Forces, pretty big shoes. You know what I mean? The Air Forces make you taller. They're big shoes. Yeah. When I turned, my foot hit the thing, uh, and then it locked my leg lock. Jeez. <laughs> Holy shit. Foot into thing. So as I was spinning, it was my chair was legitimately trying to tear my fucking ACL. Right there. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was over, uh, dude. I thought it was over. Anyways, you, gotta find, you gotta get that clip. I need to see that. Oh, got sometime. the job done though. Is Todd burying this guy right here? Whoa. No. No, he's not a coordinator. He is. But he's never been anywhere before. He's not calling plays. Oh, okay. All right. And he has never been anywhere before, so that's what you're talking about. Bro, what if I blew my fucking ACL in the chair? I thought there was that a chance you did. From yeah. this angle, it looked like your knee was all fucked. I thought you split your head open, too. I'm yeah. Strange. You better get it. I mean, he's probably getting an MRI. Nah, no, nah, I'm good. Look. Whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, did you watch Ted Lasso? Nah, nah, nah. Oh, oh, I'm so yeah. old now. You could do the DAC thing where you just get an MRI for fun. Yeah, and just nobody panic. <laughs> mm -hmm. And nobody panicked, just trying to see if my leg works still. My uh, my shoulder's good. That was why I was trapped. Yeah. yeah. I tried to get the shoe off, but I, you know. I Throw just, those shoes out after the drop back, and then that, oh. get them out. That's what I get from Zito, I believe. Pretty big shoe. Might be that makes sense. Burn them. Burn I will them. say you were an athlete, though, to get yourself out of that. That uh, doesn't even wear that shoes. That leg lock. Thank you. A lot of people are saying I did not look athletic here, but I like to think that they what didn't mean? even know what was going on inside of my knee at the if time. If that was anyone else in this room, well, I mean, we have a torn ACL. Think, think about this, though. I mean, it was legitimately oh. stuck, like, right. There it is again. Yeah, oh, not my good. God. Not good. Can't Careful, do it. yeah. Throw that chair out. We need to get you a new chair. Shoes and chair. Fuck it out. Get it out. Get it out. See ya. I don't like it. I don't like it, AJ. Get him out. <laughs> all right, let's wrap this show up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a good recovery. I, I fall all the time, believe me. I I trip, I fall on things. My wife calls me clumsy, but I, I know how to fall, though. That's the thing. Like I definitely have learned how to fall over the years. Yeah, yeah. You fall asleep while you drive. drive. You know how to crash cars while you're sleeping. I, I know oh, that is you. Out. I'm not that way, though. I'm not a faller, actually. I'm normally a pretty agile guy. That's why when I was in a precarious position with the chair there, I was a little scared, I'm be honest. You saw a little fear in my eye. Still looked quite calculated. Yeah, yeah it was cerebral. It's cerebral, quite mm -hmm. calculated. I mean, do they think about that whenever they're building this chair? <laughs> no. 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 Not at all. What happens if you're twisting and get locked up on the thing? You shouldn't be able to to lower like that that easily. That's right. Wow, 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 what if too. an eight-year-old kid's doing that? <laughs> With Air Forces on? Yeah, snap his legs right off. Bang, dead. <laughs> Dak Prescott, you gonna, you gonna not a tramp, Tony. Make huh? sure, hey, sue the, sue the chair company. That's you a good idea. that. I actually will. There should be a recall, for, at least. I just want to let everybody know that the way I'm going to recover from that is by eating my fast protein. Uh, 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 hey! yeah! You know what I mean? You get proteins in there to... Uh, Strong legs. Yeah, to heal. That's what protein mm -hmm. does. That's why you eat protein after you work out, because your muscles yes. are being torn apart. Mm -hmm. Proteins yeah. come in and build them up. Ain't that right, AJ? Yeah, that's right. Actual. Sure, yeah, of course. That's why you're supposed to take protein after you work out, right? Yeah, and that's a great, those fast bars, very moist, beautiful, great bars. Some people would say they taste like a Snickers a little bit. And some people would say there's no way that they are as healthy as they say. It, right. in, but I, we've called them. Mm -hmm. We actually asked. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. There is no way that this thing has 19 carbs. That's it. 19 no. Carbs. What? 19. Under 20 carbs. Look at this. Look at this. AJ. Is that cookies and cream? Bro, oh, wow. that's a protein bar, dude. Wow. It's protein bars are supposed to be cardboard. They're supposed to taste like shit. Yeah. They're literally just supposed to be something to put into your stomach so you can be like, oh, I ate something today. Like that's yeah. literally what protein bars are supposed to be. They're supposed to be absolutely can you twist any other no, protein no, bar? No, 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 no. It's unbelievable what this. Of. It's good. Oh, oh, so, oh, oh come on. It's good man. Bar. It's it's good good bar. Bar. Oh my god. My knee feels better already. That's why it's called fast, I think. Yeah. Yes. I think that's why it's called fast, because it heals you so damn quick. But right now, the uh um, it's too who, who makes that bar, Pat? Fast. Celsius. By, isn't it by Celsius? From our friends at Celsius. I think Celsius bought fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I if I do have the Goodbye. acquisition smart bar proper fast happened just like celsius by the way mm -hmm. yeah celsius makes no sense how it tastes so good and there's like celsius said what's another company that maybe is like us that makes no sense how Smart. it's this healthy and this good mm. they found fast they're like there's no reason that that should be as healthy as it is with how good it tastes and how moist it is so celsius bought them up so now celsius and fast have become a tag team of awesome if you're trying to get a little bit more fit while eating and drinking something that tastes delicious smart business 
Mm. 20 grams of protein, less than two grams of sugar. Ooh. Low carb, you already heard that. It's the best tasting protein bar in the market and Celsius folks are hooking us up with a great offer. For a limited time, go to amazon.com. Uh, there's a link in the description and use promo code 220 FASTBACK, F-A-S-T-B-A-C-K, for 20% off your order. That's 20 fast back for 20% off your order at amazon.com when you go to the link in the description 20 fast back 20% off your order of fast bars they are so damn good so the good. best delicious salted salted caramel you get it yes yeah, so, salted caramel peanut crunch is that what you're saying yeah. unbelievable is delicious. it caramel cor caramel caramel i say caramel. caramel a lot of people say caramel it's caramel 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 it's caramel, caramel. no it's caramel. caramel it's caramel yeah. caramel is a town in indiana yeah but you're hooty tooty if you say caramel. Yeah. Bingo. P L A Z A. Sorry, I sorry I P L A Z A. Say it. Plaza. Yeah. Yeah. It's Plaza. Plaza. Yeah, well dude. yeah, I don't have that accent, but caramel is spelled C A R A M E L. Caramel. 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 Okay. Tomato tomato. Mm. Nobody no. says tomato. I've heard it once <laughs> or twice. Target Target. Nope. I've heard those. Potato potato? Nobody says potato. Nobody. <laughs> So anytime somebody says that, I always go, one of those is right, one of those is wrong. Potato pancakes? It's the Brits. It's the Brits. Whoa. <laughs> Would you like potato soup? Take it easy. Or tomato <laughs> soup. And they also go, <laughs> sun-dried tomatoes, sir. One, two, tree, 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 tree. We got tree here. We get tree points, please. David what? Beckham, whenever I heard him do his first interview, I was like, oh, the most handsome guy of all time. It's getting paid two million a day for the next three years or something like that, and they say, "Have three times I've done it." I'm like, "Oh my god!" Wow. All right, I did not know that's how we say three over there in the old land. But how does our language? How is it the same as theirs? And how did Pittsburgh become so different than somewhere else? How dialect I think is a. I'm waiting for that documentary. How did we end yeah. up speaking the way we did? I assume <laughs> there was just one guy who said, "I ain't fucking talking like that," and, and just started. <laughs> You know, <laughs> Pittsburgh East. Yeah. Well, then what about the South? Like, the South was like... Same deal. Same thing. We don't want to talk like those guys up there. Team Crumpets, they said, hey, buddy, get the fuck out of here. I ain't talking like that. And then, boom, you got the Southern accent. <laughs> what about out West? See, it, the Pittsburgh yeah! East... Yeah! Pittsburgh East started because of all the smoke in the air because of the steel plants. We didn't want to open our mouths that much because we didn't want the air getting in. So <laughs> that's how <laughs> Pittsburgh East started. And then in the South... Makes sense. Everyone was talking with molasses in her mouth. Oh, slow. <laughs> so <laughs> these are how things start. It was so hot down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were uh, kind of moving in slow motion. Yeah. Did hot. you say once that uh, it was the most polluted place of all time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had the sootiest <laughs> air like 14 years running. <laughs> no such thing as the sun. We just thought it was the moon all the time. Great. <laughs> What's the deal? Is it always foggy? No, that's actually a uh, bunch of soot in the sky. <laughs> Oh, okay, good. So there is sun on the other side of that soot cloud. Yeah. We yeah. think. Sun will come up tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs> Depends on how the mills are doing. Everybody talks about Seattle, how it rains all the time. I think Pittsburgh had the most rain days for it like was, 10 years running as well. It was top five. Yeah. Nobody ever gives a credit. Like, you come out of Pittsburgh, you fucking battle, dude. You are battle tested. Yep. You come out of there just being a child. Little did I know there's trees attacking us up on the hill, too. I could have been sleeping and dead. No kidding. Insane. You make it out of Pittsburgh, you make it. You make it anywhere, make especially it. up here in fucking Boston. Oh, oh. scumbag! Hey, no problem. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Help <laughs> <laughs> like me now. Hey, Boston has some. Uh, there's some places up there. What's some Mary, absolute? He, he, he tossed it over here. <laughs> <laughs> Chair's gone. I was gonna sit down. <laughs> I'm a little tired. Just sit on the floor, man. Take your mic down with you. Native American like, style. Like your boy CM Punk, yeah. Oh, nice little bar stool. Look at this. Wow. Oh, Look at that. Okay. We knew it coming handy one Now you ordered days. three pints with that chair. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let me get a pint, please. Uh-oh, you're fucking get caught in that, too. Hey, yo, barkeep. Nah, this one is very <laughs> inconvenient. It will not change its size. Another <laughs> round of Boilermakers for me and my friends. You know your leg's not touching the floor reminds me of? Oh, come on. Connor. Bro, right, look, Connor. please. Please, don't ever. Oh, no, but if you were to put them up like your left leg. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like that. All right, let's get out of here. Yeah. All right. Can't do it. Who are you talking about? <laughs> What's that? Who are you talking about, Connor? I mean, Blues Clues, right? You're talking about Blues Clues? Yeah, I'm talking Steve. about Blues Clues, yeah. Steve did this. Right? Also, uh, in The Lord of the Rings, Frodo Baggins, when he went to, when you he went son to the of bar. A bitch. What? I did not. 
When he went to the bar, Cut it out. when he went to the bar in the Shire, he couldn't fucking. He was sitting at the bar ordering pints. Enough is enough. I'm done with it. I, mean, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, no. yeah. Come on. No, I mean, I didn't know it was like this. <laughs> what is that? that? There's the final what? straw. <laughs> what? I mean, is that Andre the Giant's chair? <laughs> Could you pop that back up, please? <laughs> To be fair, that's the more flattering one. Has he responded, Siciliano? <laughs> well, no, we're defending him right now. NFL Network is <laughs> dogging him. I know, that's what I'm saying. He needs to get out in front of this. <laughs> well, no, he can't. Big after Pat called him Siciliano 150 <laughs> times yesterday. <laughs> that ship may have sailed. <laughs> oh, it was me. <laughs> well, I mean, no, it was... I mean, this guy... <laughs> What did yeah, I say? Yeah, I, was, yeah, I, just, I wasn't talking about Siciliano. Yeah, you just oh, said yeah, he you was were. from the Shire. No, <laughs> he asked me what it reminded me of, and I told you guys what it did. And then Zito Whoa. went ahead and put that photo up. I wasn't talking about Siciliano, all right? I listen. There are some things, you know, that are just for us. Oh, yeah. Every time this topic comes up, it is just for us because... Outside of the studio, there's real conversations about whether or not they hate Cicely Auto <laughs> over there at NFL Network. They have to. They have to hate the guy. Are you talking like hour, hour and a half conversation on whether or not NFL Network hates Cicely Auto? Just. And then with evidence being shown, look at him next to Willie. <laughs> look at him next to Joe. Look at the angle here. Look at the chair here. That's what happens out here. So I apologize to Cicely Auto for the way NFL Network treats you. Oh, no. We are a pro Siciliano yes. show. show. Pro go Siciliano show. And I mean, maybe he would. Don't you think it's possible that they're worried? Hey, if we bring him a miniature chair, he'll be offended. Why would it have to be a what well, the hell? Just a normal size, regular size chair, AJ. Size chair, AJ. <laughs> like, I'm not <laughs> 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 you just bring the guy a normal size chair. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on. <laughs> All of those monsters. Willie McGinnis, he dwarfs me. I was AJ, it just has to be a normal size chair. Please. Okay? Not. <laughs> I'm, that's what I'm asking for. <laughs> the chair is one thing. When the, NFL, have to get. when the NFL Network is bringing in fucking Manute Bowl to do a segment. <laughs> exactly. sit next to it. It's like, hey, this guy played basketball. Okay? Figure it out. And he's 7'9". <laughs> They're well, setting the know. guy up for fucking disaster. What is it? Forced perspective? You got to put him in the front, right? So he looks bigger. Oh, no, that actually does not work. I mean, we can't. Putting him in the front does not work, obviously, there. Zito. I cannot say this enough. Zito. This is fucked up, Zito. No. Yeah. NFL Network, this is fucked up. <laughs> this Figure is... it out, Network of NFL. Oh, my God. You think the Network would have respect <laughs> oh, no. for one of their top <laughs> Like that? I mean, this is very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Welcome yeah. to the world. How do you think Cicely Ong feels? <laughs> I feel terrible for him. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's what we've we been saying do. this entire time. We're trying to we're help trying the goddamn to guy. Jesus, dude. Help him out. I son. can't wait till we go Somebody. to the Super Bowl this year and see Fucking all see these him. people. <laughs> this oh. my, AJ, this is a new problem. Okay. But we're defending the guy, though. We're yeah, yeah, of this. course we are. I'm not, I, I'm not 100 sure if he's going to get to the point of hearing us defend him after all the shit. But I'm meeting a lot of these people that <laughs> yep. you know, you and the toxic table just fucking bury oh. on a daily basis. And I've said time I do and not time think. again, I love Sisley. <laughs> love the guy to death. I fucking love okay. Sisley, and what they're doing to him is not right. It's unfair. It's fucked up. Someone needs to say it. How else are we going to spread aware awareness on the entire it's thing? Bullshit. I mean, we're really looking out for people all over the place on TV. That Listen, us, Ita you, right? us Italians are not the tallest group of human beings, okay? It happens. <laughs> How do you really say his name? Siciliano. I don't know. Spreading awareness on that, too, because people have been calling him Siciliano for a long time. Dude. It's because that's how you That's two days oh. of me in tears. <laughs> that's two days of me in tears because of how terrible you guys are as people. Guys Mostly guys. you two, yeah. and definitely you. Don't look at oh, me. Yeah. Do not look at me. I've never seen Lord of the Rings. I had no idea what he was talking about. Hey. But you knew exactly what he was getting at. You knew exactly. No, I really didn't, because I saw Kevin Hart post a picture of himself with his feet dangling, and he was like making a joke of it. I was thinking you're going Kevin Hart. You watch Heart to Heart? I think it's pretty good, right? 
Uh, yeah, all of them. <laughs> that Anything one with uh, the guy from Ocean's Eleven, that clip. Don Cheadle. Yeah. Damn! Yeah. I did see that. I'm sorry. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, real or fake? Was... Huh? Was that real or fake? That was like the debate. Did they know? Was it set up? Between two I firms. mean, it was supposed to be funny, I think. Kevin Hart had planned on it being funny and Cheadle. Think Don Cheadle was really pissed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Dude, Cheadle wanted to get mad. It seemed like he was not happy. He's also an actor. Yeah, but that's, I think they He's knew it was going to be an oh, awesome moment. Good moment. In the middle of it, they knew it, right? Yeah. Probably. I like to think that Michael Cole knows when we're in the middle of a good moment. He just looks over at me and just buys into it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Kevin Hart and Cheadle have that type of, I mean, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. The way Kevin Hart was acting, I don't think he thought Cheetah was actually mad. Was Cheetah actually mad? People were saying Cheetah was actually mad. Uh, uh, when it was trending, people were saying that Cheetah was fucking pissed. Yeah. Cheetah, what's Cheetle, wrestling? Yeah, he Cheetah wouldn't get. Come on, Don. Like I can't even see Diggs over his computer. The camera's up, so that's the only way I can see his face. Is he Come looks on, like? Zee. Get on the seat, bro. He looks like. Um, What's the neighbor from Home Improvement? Wilson. Wilson. That's, that's literally what I'm staring at right now. I see half your face up above that thing. There it there, is. There, yes. Thank you. All right, let's get out of here. Take a short break and uh, be back in about 20 and a half hours or so. Ain't that right, AJ? Yeah, man. Can't wait. Well, tomorrow's what, Wednesday? I said I was going to do a big giveaway, didn't I? Mm -hmm. uh, you said you were considering it. Yeah. Maybe I thought the end of the week. Maybe. That was only if, <laughs> that was only if uh, Jason Wright revealed the name of his team. Based on the theme of the show, though, maybe we should do didn't. a smaller giveaway. No, oh, no, come on, Tony. Cutting oh. camera to camera kills me. Tony, that was despicable. You cannot be saying stuff, like, saying stuff that. like that. It's enough. All right, listen. I will not stand for this. You're all fined. <laughs> what? Yeah. Me? So, Phil, take money out of all of yep. them. Come on. 5000 out of yours. 5000 out of yours. Oh, what did we do? Okay, 5000 out of yours. $20,000 giveaway. Yeah, thanks to all you guys being despicable. Fuck. 5000 from Ty. 5000 from Connor. 5000 no. from Diggs. 5000 from AJ. It'll be fine. It'll be pulled directly out of their uh, out of their pays. Fine. Can we at least decide it's PMS Save Siciliano, or can we do something else? <laughs> <laughs> Like, let's at least spread awareness for the goddamn guy. It does make sense. Ty seems to be shrinking lower and lower in his chair. All right, I, use, use, use the hashtag. <laughs> Connors, I like Connors. Can we do that evenly? I do not want to bring attention to Sicily. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> PMS fix NFL Network then. There you go. <laughs> then we start beef with the, all of the NFL Network. Have a pretty True, good I love rap sheet. Hashtag PMS little giveaway. Okay. Uh, use that tweet. Use that hashtag. It's a little giveaway. Mm -hmm. Twenty thousand. We'll give away a little something bigger tomorrow. Uh, and uh, guess, guess the uh, guess, guess how tall Ty is, Connor is, and Diggs is. Okay. So just put uh, hashtag PMS little giveaway. Mm -hmm. And then put Ty Schmidt is, and you only have to have a uh, foot and inch. We don't need to get into centimeters yeah. here. If you guess oh, good, two good. out of three right, you're automatically entered into but do winning. they have official heights? Huh? They, I'm sure they all would dispute what height they actually are. We'll, we'll get a fucking tape measure out. Yeah. I'll break that out. You can out. go off driver's license Driver's as well. license. You get That's two true. out of three of them correct. <laughs> well, they just ask you on your driver's license, hey, how tall are you? That's you just not build true. Yourself. No. They measure you. Yeah. No, they don't. Oh, not in Ohio, they don't. Well, let's get Do they weigh you too, Connor? Are well, they weighing you, Connor? Yeah, yeah they weigh me too. It's AJ. like the doctor's office. I'm sure that would go well in 2021. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this was <laughs> what in 2018 when it happened. <laughs> Where are you going, man? <laughs> They're drifting what away. What are you talking about? I'm just trying to recreate each individual set that the NFL <laughs> Network has set up in the past. All right, Cicillano does not deserve this, but hashtag PMS. Must I have to say this yet again? We are a pro go <laughs> yes. Sisleyano show. show. Love you. I fucking love, you. love Sisleyano. I love you, sis. All right, hashtag PMS little giveaway. Uh, if you get two out of three of the heights of these three gentlemen over here, right, you will automatically be entered into one of four five thousand dollar giveaways. Hashtag PMS little giveaway. Enter on Twitter. Uh, and tomorrow we'll do a giveaway in the YouTube comment section of another $20,000 probably throughout the rest of the week. Here. Oh, yeah. Uh, can't thank you all enough for watching and listening. I would like to apologize to everybody that we offended. Um, <laughs> it is not... I mean, I'm sure it's on purpose by them. No. No. Sure no. no. <laughs> <laughs> trying to spread awareness. Trying to help this guy out. <laughs> You're just one inch away. <laughs> 
I go on this show. I go on with Cicely on there sometimes. I'm not gonna be. Able to, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Anymore. <laughs> can, you, can you tell him to figure it out for the guy? Or if someone, hopefully, someone sends this 35 minute clip talking about it. Hopefully, not. he's on our side. He yeah, knows, he thinks he knows shit too. Yeah. Well, he's got to send it to the producers. Well, someone just tell the producers then straight up. Listen, the joke has gone too far. You hear me? I agree. Back what on. started as a mission, a movement to help a guy out who's an incredible host, has become a mockery. It still is. A mockery? I know. No, we're trying to help him out. Yes. I don't know if this is Baldy's idea or Billick or what, but someone needs to pay the piper. <laughs> Billick. <laughs> Billick has, has final say on the chairs. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it is Billick. <laughs> we don't know. Maybe it's Raj. The NFL it owns could it, be right? Raj. Sure. Hashtag PMS little giveaway. That's the show. All right? We can't wait to see you tomorrow. We thank you all so much. Big show Can coming I enter? tomorrow. What's that? Can I enter the contest? I'd like to. Oh, you already have, it feels like, honestly. The way you've been dancing on Siciliano's height this time. I'm not even close to dancing on him. I, you've I been driving the train, Hawk, and you know it this <laughs> entire time. You. I'm glad you guys brought it to my attention because I do feel like he's getting screwed. <laughs> What's that train side. look like? The train? Well, it's got, it's a it's kind of a smaller train, but AJ oh. has like eight of the carts filled up you're with his toxicity, not shiny, ours. Shiny time station. Me and Ric Flair. For sure. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Jeez, Diggs, just see the cowboy hat. I want to let everybody know by tomorrow we'll be better. And I ain't laughing at this anymore. So fucking enough with your jokes. Let's actually try to make this guy's life better because yeah. he's a great Grow host. Hundred percent, all in on that. Love, Love that. you, Grow Siciliano. Up. Grow up, AJ. Yeah, <laughs> grow up, dude. All right. Everybody needs to do the same, especially over here at the Toxic Table. Definitely over there at the COVID desk with Diggs. Yeah. And let's go ahead and figure this out. Gumpy, thank you for being a professional and not doing anything absurd here. Classy painter. It's T. It's, you know that seat doesn't go down. That's the only reason why. <laughs> that is true. No, That's no, true. no, yeah. no. I would never do that to Siciliano. I think you pronounced his name wrongly than all of us. <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, I think you did. I, I think you did. What the hell is that? Hey, Pat, we, I think you need to stay in the air for another three hours just so they have to stay in that position. Hey, they, you know, right now they're doing the leg hold up. Yeah. yeah, yeah can, we, can we show their legs? You, gotta, you have some, some great core strength. No, guys. no, you can't show the legs because that'll give away on the height giveaway. Oh, Foxy, what are you doing? Connor definitely has a hole in his pants too, staring me down here. <laughs> Is that right? I think so, yeah. You guys are up. Might, uh, be from, might be from a SIG. No, that's a wire. There's a wire. Oh, yeah. There's a couple massive wires down here, and I've been worried about unplugging them for Ty, far too Ty, good work. Look you up on your toes, Ty. That is amazing. Uh, my calves are starting to cramp up a little bit. And this is all so that we can hopefully bring some awareness to Cicely on. What is this? Stop fucking over, Cicely on. No! You see the cowboy hat over there. Diggs is over there. All right, from that angle, it's really <laughs> yeah, it's tough to see. <laughs> all right. Enough. The joke's over, guys. Yeah. Fast bars are so good. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you think? What if I just sat here? I, oh, grab the cells. I got liquid deaths and fast bars. I can be here all day. I hope you guys feel good. This is what Cicely Long has got to deal with every day. Exactly. And out of respect for him, mm -hmm. we should have to do it too. This, this, is, this is like whenever the Catholics do that 40 days. Exactly. Oh, yeah. What? No jerking yeah, off. There it is. <laughs> What'd you is, say? This is sitting. <laughs> Did you say no jerking off? <laughs> yeah. Is that your, <laughs> is that your go That's do? Lent. 40 days and 40 nights. That's your go to for Lent? Dude? Thank you, Josh Hartnett. <laughs> <laughs> that movie. <laughs> Josh Hartnett, started. was that his last movie? I think that is his last movie. Roethlisberger started with 40 days and it turned into an entire life. Yeah, but it took him 18 years to get to 40 days. It's not long than that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? All right, we're burning so many bridges right now. Do you think Ben knows that this show continues to publicize? I don't think so. <laughs> Ben sees oh. everything is what they said. Yeah. Say what? He sees everything, so I'd assume he sees us. <laughs> yeah, only, only a few times you guys mention it. Bro, the not just Ben, I've never met Ben, don't really care if I have a relationship with Ben, but a lot of people that I meet, you know, I introduce myself and they go, oh, I know who you are. Okay, I'm like, oh no. All right, uh -oh. then I have to run through the Rolodex. 
what is Ty or Connor or AJ said about this person? You know, like, not oh me. my God. Not me. The opinions of those on the show, by the way, do not reflect that of their employer. True. Not at all. The actions of these people do not reflect the opinions of their employer. Not at all. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Play ball. You gonna flip that ball? Is that signed to get a garage sale? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Legit hashtag PMS little giveaway. Go ahead and enter for one of four or five thousand dollar prizes from one from Ty, one from Connor, one from Diggs, one for AJ for their toxicity. They have been fined. I want to let you know, Siciliano, I will not let this fucking fly. Nope. Neither will we, Siciliano. <laughs> We're standing with you, uh, Andy. You're not standing. Trying number nine. Really? Yes. All right. What's Siciliano We're, at? All right. We're, We're doing it for you. Make sure you enter. Be smart. Win some money. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, we're going to try to stay a little prouder and taller tomorrow, to be honest, this show right here. That is really the purpose of this whole thing, and we can't thank you enough for riding alongside of this oh, absolute no. shit show of our company. Love you, Siciliano. Hey, we should have done this for Ice Cube. <laughs> you think Ice Cube maybe stuck around and watched the show afterwards? We got to this point, he's like, "Yeah, he's fucking." I, I, man, I hope so. I hope he turned it off and he turned it back around 15 minutes ago. And it's, this is the shot, Ice Cube. These mother, what the fuck? <laughs> he's like showing his wife. Hey, I went on this this cool fun show. <laughs> uh, all right, see you, everybody.